Good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Icebound. Mm. Mm. As always, mm. we would really appreciate it if you would like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check the bell so you never miss an episode. And while you're doing that, I'm going to read some comments from episode 19, and of course one from episode 13, which was Derek's favorite. He threw that in, and I gotta oblige. Uh, number one, quote, <clears throat> The image of Yornir striking himself with lightning is one of the most iconic images this table has ever evoked in my mind. Well done. Absolutely iconic. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, number two, Derek. It's my craft. Derek, welcome to a crash course of dynamite and detonation. Everyone else absolutely devastated. <laughs> number three, not me panicking and crying in the movie moment between Yornir and Queenie. No. Aww. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aww. Give, yeah, let's get those awesome. That's Number nice. four, this episode was beautiful. The storytelling from Derek, the choices made by Ty Shen and Queenie, the wholesome moments from oh. Scrim, Yornir, and Barnabas, truly a joy to watch. Now the wait for episode 20 begins. Wait no longer, because here it is. <laughs> here it is. It's ready. It's the time. wait is over. And then Derek's favorite comment from episode 13. This is a long one, so buckle up. So it's 2.30 a.m. I was interested to see how much wine Taishen actually drank, seeing as he was only taking mouthfuls. Ah. The average sip of liquid for a male is 25 milliliters, so originally he was supposed to have around 1,250 milliliters of wine from 50 barrels. This is just shy of 275... I don't know what CL is, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm an American, I don't know what CL Centiliters. Is. Yeah, maybe, okay, I, this is good to me. Centiliters of wine, uh, bottles of wine. Uh, definitely drunk, but doable. Our sweet boy got to barrel 80. He's likely drank more as he went along, so let's round up to 30 milliliters per sip. That's almost three and a half bottles of wine at a very conservative estimate. Estimate: Wine drunk Taishi is going to wake up with a live, laugh, wine, distressed, hanging sign in his bedroom in the morning. <laughs> Amazing. Did you write that comment there? No. <laughs> you definitely did. I was going to say, anytime somebody starts doing math, I'm always like, this is Derek. So leave a comment, and maybe next month we'll read your comment live here on stream. Please enjoy tonight's episode. Thank you. We are legends of Avantris. Lend us your strength and join us. Slowly, you all begin to wake up after a long night of rest. Still tired, you wipe the sleep from your eyes and feel the cold creeping into your room. It is quite warm under the thick blankets, however, and it's all too easy to let yourself sink back into the soft mattress and absorb the truth of where you find yourselves now. Just yesterday, you dared to confront the malevolent, parasitic entity known as Sotholith, a massive brain-like organism wielding terrible psionic powers and plans for total domination. Yet, you managed to survive. Astonishingly, it has only been six days since you woke up here 
in what what once was Ogerton. What a strange and frightening experience this week has been, so full of mystery and uncertainty. And how long before that? Only 11 days ago, you trekked up a beckoning mountain and celebrated the end of autumn, midwinter, with the spirits of silver dragonborn druids who likely have been dead for centuries. And you think of what you learned there, on the mountain top, the fateful quest of the gods themselves, the fateful quest the gods themselves have bound you to. You shudder, reliving the violence of the cursed monster that sought to consume you just a day before that day, midwinter. For a moment, its terrifying visage passes before your eyes, and you have to put it away again or let the fear take you. And for weeks and months before then, you survived, journeying north across a great ice sheet, the western coast of Tr Drakkar, with only the friends who stir sleepily beside you now to keep you company. You think of the band of kobolds you met, remembering their strange ways and their offer to take you beyond the mountains to central Drakkar. You think of the metal man with his steed, the one who called himself Secundus. Not three months ago, you were stranded here in southwest Trakar. The crew, the captain. You think of the white dragon, the princess of wrath, as you perceived her then, and you wonder where she is now. You recall the dread tower you approached out there on the frozen ocean, and the time it stole from you. Just about nine months ago then, wasn't it? Nine months ago, you all chose the same table to sit at in a humid tavern in Wuze, and now you are all here together. The experiences and visions you have all shared, how fate has called you. Today is the 25th day of the 12th month, and in four more days, it will be a new year. The warmth of the blankets soothes your bruises and healing wounds. Perhaps the day can wait another hour. Turning into your pillow, you drift back into sleep to rest a bit more, and you all enjoy a long rest. What happens next is up to you. Let us fucking go, Krako. <laughs> mm, let us fucking go. We are in separate rooms or what? Uh, you for the purposes waiting. of waking up, I will say that you are in the room that you all uh, first started sleeping in, uh, that you were, uh, the accommodations that Manius, now known as Man, uh, uh, provided you. Um, so I'll say that you're in the same room. Like, um, I know that you went to a separate room to um, have your conversation, but I'd say at some point in the night, perhaps, you came back to uh, this place that feels almost a little like home now. And you can wake up and do what you like. Kind of communal living? Very much. And uh, very communal. Uh, there are um, uh, dozens and dozens of ogres. Uh, there are um, perhaps a few hundred humans, uh, thanks to your efforts to sort of save and spread the word to get out of Ogreton uh, before you went to the Nautiloid ship there in the cave. And all of you are chiefly in this central villa partially because it is the least damaged, but also uh, because you are here, because the people who uh, uh, made it possible for the terrible, and word is spreading, word is very much spreading across the community of what and why all of this happened in the way that it did. Um, things seem peaceful. Uh, you were able to go to sleep having a sense of that, and uh, you'll be able to wake up to that information more as you start to explore the day.
We're all thinking. <laughs> um, I would. I, I guess Scrim is not an early riser. Um, but if if there were to be food being prepared, or if our if our chef or our galley cook happened to be up cooking, mm-hmm. I would I, Scrim would wake up. Or if someone was cooking, Scrim would wake up. But he wouldn't be an early riser unless there was a reason, like food or something, to get up. That is your choice as as a player. Uh, you you would have started smelling breakfast being prepared in the early hours. Um, many of the habits and old ways uh, prior to your f- freeing the city uh, have. Uh, uh, been baked into these people. It, it, it matters not that they're um, now free in this way, but you would have woken up to the smell of cinnabons. Is that worth getting up to uh, for? Yes. That, that, <laughs> that's up to you. We have yeah. a cinnabon out here? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. For how, sure. Uh, how cold is it? What about uh, Annie Ann's? I prefer them it's getting, to Cinnabon. It's getting colder. I'm sorry? Do they have Annie Ann? Because I prefer them to Cinnabon. <laughs> Uh, yes, they absolutely have Auntie Anne style Cinnabons. Do Auntie Anne yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Anne God. That's right. That's right. That's right. We just call her Aunt. Yeah, I, yeah, I would. Uh, I would get up if if uh, if if there was breakfast to be had and maybe some sort of coffee or something like that, right? And, and mm-hmm. just help myself and and kind of gauge the day and and see how cold it is and stay close to the fires that we have and uh there are fireplaces that are roaring now um and there are people bustling up and down the hallways uh uh there is a great amount of stores of food um but you also notice that uh uh there is a um uh, combined effort to continue to try and repair the front of this villa that was hit by that concussive force of the explosion that happened but four miles from here and uh there so you can hear also the sound of knocking and 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 carpentry be, uh, happening as as uh humans uh former vassals are 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 boarding up windows uh windows that when it was more temperate didn't need to have uh, any pane glass or anything in them. Um, b- b- open windows that just were, you know, draped that sort of thing in a more uh, temperate way. Um, do I, given everything that happened with like the brains and the thoughts and the and the dreams, would there be and kind of what was attempted to access? Would there be any, be, would there be any kind of recollection of dreams that Barnabas might have that might be new, given everything that happened to his brain previously? I would say that uh, we ended the last session with me describing a dream where you were back in the mind library and uh, you pulled a new book off the shelf, a book that unlocked um, uh, information that was only hidden away there or perhaps put there by your psionic interaction, the tremendous stress that your mind went through in facing Sothleth. If you feel that you would have had that dream and then transitioned into another dream, those other dreams would have been traditional Barnabas dream fodder. Nothing particularly out of the ordinary, uh, just just the, the things that uh, uh, someone like Barnabas would, would experience in, in the night in that way. Um, it would have been very restful and peaceful. I will wake up in an incredibly good mood and I'll be whistling uh, despite like, the apocalyptic nightmare that we experienced. <laughs> and I would have gotten up, not too early, but early enough where I would have started cooking as soon as possible before everyone else could wake up. And I, were there hogs or was it just cows that they had? They there have? were. Scrim was counting them. There oh, the a, hogs, yeah. There was a variety yeah. of various cattle. So I am going to make the breakfast from Hal's Moving Castle. <laughs> uh, times, you know, times 50. You know, however much bacon I can get, however much pork belly, that I'm presuming that there's some kind of eggs, bread and cheese, and just like really classic, hearty, rustic, nothing too fancy, nothing fancy at all, very simple to basically feed um, a whole lot of people. When you murder man for that right now, yeah. yeah. (laughs) When you arrive, you um, uh, recognize some of the uh, humans that are there as former uh, uh, members of the family of the House Bliginius, and others who are new, who perhaps came from other villas and uh, uh, joined this this the first day of this tribe. And uh, there's a sense of reverence from both 
parties. Uh, those who have known you over the last week, and those of you who are just seeing, those of you, them who are just seeing you for the first week, they are uh, happily uh, helping you, taking our orders, uh, running down to the larder to get whatever it is that you need, be it the meats that you described, or lard, or seasoning, mm -hmm. or what have you. Uh, 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 making sure that if it's a menial chopping of a vegetables task, do you want to do it? I can do it. Uh, you go back and forth a little bit, and you are able to create a spread under your direction without issue immediately. Um, I'll probably the same uh, the the young man or the boys that I was showing kind of how to deglaze and kind of make a, um, the steak or whatever we were making dinner last night. And I'll say, okay, lads. So now if there's a bonnie lass that has your heart, you make her this breakfast in bed, and then you'll have hers. I mean, that's a Barnabas promise. And uh, I'm gonna basically just teach anyone who's interested in making a super simple. Um, but very delicious breakfast. There, there, there's a row of students, and you see many of them nodding, and the one at the end nodding especially enthusiastically. It seems that there's love in his heart, and uh, that you are all working together to create this feast uh, just in the morning. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, I think I would wake up pretty early, uh, and I would, not as early as Barnabas, but maybe the sounds from uh, cooking breakfast, him loudly shouting, uh, would rise me quickly. And I would, uh, quietly, this is just the next day, right? This, this isn't is, like this a... This is the next day. Okay. It's the, 20, it's the 25th, and uh, we'll be experiencing quite a bit of time, so you can just say, this is what I will be doing for the day, or you can describe in, in detail if you want to go sequence someone out, or if you want to, however you like to approach your day. I would, uh... Start to brew some tea uh, and brew as, you know, as much as uh, I can uh, and start to enjoy probably a cup quietly and look out uh, if we can look out uh, of a window, see kind of what everyone's doing. Uh, you, you mentioned that they have a lot of uh, sounds like maybe vegetation supplies, stuff like that. Do I get this sense that they're building up this area? that they're in? Is there like farmland? One of the they have? usual features of Ogerton uh, was that it had uh, vegetation and uh, animals, plants that should not have been on Drakkar. Uh, uh, the, the, there, there, there are certain animals that will absolutely be native to the land, but it seems perhaps delivered by, uh, uh, for the for the sake of creating a facsimile, uh, uh, delivered by the illithid, there were um, hogs and cattle and, and and things you might not necessarily find. Heck, there are chickens bucking around. Uh, so when you look out, um, you still see many of those same features. Uh, even though as you look down and out the window, you see the um, what once was Ogerton, and you can see that still softly smoldering rubble where that city uh, uh, happened to be. Um, there's still patches of land. Uh, what fences were blown over? Uh, you can see uh, dotted figures out in the distance trying to wrangle um, what animals they can to try and create perhaps a new uh, new herds of these same animals. Uh, those are the kinds of things that you see when you look out the window with this question in your Hold mind. On. Hold on, boss. Hold on. <clears throat> Can you hear us? No, I mean the 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 bits are the bits are green. The bit stream is green. Bit rate's good. Bit Drop rate, frames sorry. is zero. What in the hell? Stream is dead. God, just just type something like "hold on" or like "wait." For Hi, is, is anyone are we back? Uh, back. Uh, type the letter Y it's in back. chat if yeah, that, if, if you it's if back. you if we're back. This whole area has been having terrible internet yeah. issues. I mean, well, no, we didn't drop a well, single we drop any frames. Yeah. Huh. We didn't see anything it's on our be end. It could be a Twitch. It could be a Twitch problem. Okay. It was we, a Twitch problem. A, a, a Twitch hiccup for a moment. Everything looks good on our end. Everything green. We're yeah. Refresh. CPU is only ten percent. In chat, tell everyone to refresh, just in case they yeah, don't see us. Yeah, everyone, if you're if you're uh, on mobile, close the app, type, open type it. Type refresh if you're on in chat. Refresh. Can we like just give it a minute? Just yeah. Let's 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 come to rest. That's got to be a bug. Yeah, Twitch is... Twitch is uh, <laughs> while Twitch that, is thank you, Sloss, with ADHD. Thank you so much with the $50 tip right on the treasure chest. Oh, what a you. legend. Yeah. This is an thank awesome B-Day present. A uh, couple days early, though. So we'll have happy birthday, Sloss. Happy birthday, Max. 
you're a legend. Happy I get to early watch birthday. the fam stream while I smoke a cigar and drink some good hooch. Hell yeah. Oh, I can't yeah. 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 There we go. Oh, oh, oh no, step! I mean, oh no, step, oh, no, step fam! I seem to have dropped some money. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank Good you. God, thank it is. Thank you, Slug. Um, question: As a player, not a character, because Scrim would have no fucking clue of this. But do I, as a player, or have any? And you can feel free to tell me to go fuck myself. Do we feel Jeez. like the flora might not survive? Dracar that was introduced oh, by the Illithids. And I, I mean, I guess that would extend to the fauna unless they're, they're animal husbandry. Um, like, you know, if they introduce any kind of plants that are not native Dracar, do we feel like they won't survive? Is that a reasonable question or is that a... I, I think I that that's it. a... Before we answer that so that we have it for the stream, where did we last leave? I guess it's on the recording, so maybe it should be fine. Yeah. I, what was the last thing you all saw? Because, I mean, we were out for at least 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a second. I just want to make sure that... Yes. Where, where, you, were you, describing, you were describing what I would see out the window. I was drinking tea, you and drinking I look out, and, and I getting see. a sense of uh, just sort of questioning about um, mm-hmm. animals and, and mm-hmm. the world around you, and whether there was farmland and these ideas. Okay, so I didn't miss any of that. I was building to... Well, actually, okay. I was building towards oh, exactly... I'm sorry. That. No, no, no. no. I, I, that, that, that was exactly what I was trying to... So, so the short answer is go fuck yourself. <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean... Because that's not a scrim question. That's like a me as Andy being questioned, like curious, mm-hmm. like if we are seeing plants dying, that, you know. But yes. I shouldn't get in there. He's more than scrim. And in in kinder terms, that it is a go fuck yourself because yeah. that you should be exploring the world to understand that question. No, no. Uh, hey. So. Uh, I'm not a. Tai Shen is going to see how what, far he can get into the. What I would, I'm not mad. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is I would uh, quietly enjoy my tea and as the day progresses, maybe we're going to explore how everyone else is waking up. I would attempt to, I would probably head out and attempt to find presumably Daisy or whoever looks like they have taken charge of this uh, rehabilitation effort. Uh, and uh, in a similar way, see maybe where I could lend some support. And what I would look to get a sense for is exactly that, where I think that uh, the food vegetation they have, if the protective dome, the magics, the uh, like heated bedrock that was mm. presumably provided from the mind flares uh, is starting to wane uh, if they're – their food stuffs, their vegetation would survive from an encroaching winter. Taishan has his curiosity back. And you take a warm cup of, of perfectly brewed tea, and you holding it between both of your hands, walk out through the front doors, past the reconstruction efforts that are happening on the face, uh, past the smells, uh, just, just breathing in the cool air. And uh, having only been here for a week, you get the sense that the temperature is dropping immediately as you walk out. And uh, the path, um, this beautiful palatial path that goes and, and, and makes a strike straight down towards the city of Ogerton, uh, allows you to start to walk and uh, almost like a trail hike almost to, to get a sense of what's happening. And you run into that administrator, that coordinator right away. It's not Daisy, it's Myelin. Myelin is very, very deftly starting to command the humans of this new tribe. He is he is starting to uh, uh, make sure that their fence is being put up, and for what sections and for which animals. Uh, uh, whether or not you get a sense of uh, if these animals can survive as the temperature drops because it is dropping rapidly, you would have to make a nature check. Um... Make a nature check. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does my yes, sir, also yes, sir. check the yeah. shit out of uh, Tai Shen to you know make it even for Scrim? You know, I'm just saying. Oh, natural twenty. Hey. 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 I don't know what my plus is, but I'll, it's a natural twenty. Twenty one. The animals, if cared for, kept warm. Perhaps there are certain varieties of plants and flowers and herbs and things that are not natural to this realm. And you, it does occur to you that perhaps the 
the balance of nature will return to this area. Mylan, good morning. <laughs> Taishan. Or unless you want to go around. I don't have to do this right now. How can I help you? Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I just, I wanted to get a sense with Ogerton now gone. Is it your plan to stay here? It seems like you're shoring up this space to survive the winter. From what we are understanding, there's the, the, the danger is over. Uh, this area is as good as any to make a home. There is fresh water. There is food in the land. Uh, there, there, there are enough of us to survive the winter, and then perhaps we'll make a new plan. But the ogres seem comfortable. I am free to. It's, 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 it's what I had been working towards for so for so long not not something that I ever thought really was achievable achievable to be honest I'm glad you and Daisy have been freed from what you had gone through I'd love to help in whatever way I can I feel like I've taken quite a bit these last nights and I'd like to if I can bring a little life back into this land you have helped by doing what you did you have allowed us to have our destinies our own again that is when we first met I didn't trust you when we second met I was angry and scared for Daisy and for what might come of your arrival here I never dreamed of this outcome not once if you want to help you are welcome and I will gladly give you something to do but You've earned a chance at rest. It doesn't seem like winter here lets anyone rest. If you won't rest, uh, I, I'd, I'd love to help accomplish what you're working for here. Maybe if the uh, crop that you've come to rely on, uh, if we think that that won't last through the, the harsh conditions... Maybe a small trek into the surrounding forest to find any kind of uh, natural vegetation. Mm. Harvest it, bring it back, create new plants. Something you could live off of, tend to for years to come. I will send a few out to see if we can scout for more natural food. That's a good idea, thank you. You're welcome. Do you end up taking a task in uh, th throughout the day? Um, th this is a, a uh, how does Taishan enjoy the day? You you go out and you learn this information and you start to, 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 to get a sense of this. Barnabas is cooking up a storm. The others are starting to awake from their slumber, but you're out here and you've finished your tea and uh, thinking about what you want to do with yourself. What does is, what is Taishan if, feel in his deepest heart? If Mylan would task me with something, I would do it without question. What I would be focused on and what I would be attempting to do is uh, supporting in any way I can the rehabilitation efforts of this space to ensure that the, the humans that are here can survive the winter and that nobody's lost in the process. Hey, what, what do you think you'd prefer? Uh, you can wrangle an animals. 
you can uh, uh, scavenge. Uh, there's there's perhaps things that down there in the, in the town. Uh, uh, you can uh, help us take inventory. Uh, we we know that these villas, these houses, had tremendous amount of stores for the winter, and it was mild then. But we may be fine this first year. If there's something you jump out at, uh, 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 help. But there's it, it really is your oyster. Well, where I come from, we uh, we had uh, a, a great deal of water nearby, Jade Shell Village. Uh, it's a beautiful place. You should see it someday. But we had to use systems to bring the water to the, the plants where they were. I don't know uh, if that's something that would be helpful here, but uh, I'm, I'm not a architect. Uh, but I, I could try to see if we could work in... Uh, a system like that to be able to keep the uh, what you'll need here watered, cared for through the through the winter. The water has stopped in the baths, and I wonder if the system of water that the Illithid installed underneath the the city uh, wasn't perhaps damaged in the blast. Perhaps you could investigate that. Watch back under the. Back under Ogreton with all the ghosts, huh? <laughs> uh, yes, I'll check that out. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> and you start to make your way back to put on your adventuring gear. Queenie, you're near. How do you find your morning? You know that meme of Anna from Frozen where she's sleeping and drooling all over the place? She's all like <laughs> That's Queenie. <laughs> yeah. Um, you spent a tremendous amount of energy over the last 24 hours, uh, more than perhaps the previous 720 or 7200 hours. It was a day. It was a day. It was as if 14 days had passed, all in one 24 hour period. Exactly right. Exactly right. I think it was four or five sessions that was literally one day. So, wow. if you want to sleep, sleep, sleep in, you may. And she does. Queenie takes a well-deserved I would say she'd probably wake up really early just naturally and smell that food was being cooked and that everyone kind of had their own stuff going and think to herself, no danger. they don't need me today and go back to sleep. Wisely. You're near. I would get up and I would turn over and realize that there's like some of my fur is in the bed. And I'll reach up and I'll feel kind of where the lightning had gone through my body. There are like little bits, like almost like lightning patterns where I'm still wounded from mm -hmm. that moment. And I'll sort of wipe and feel some of my blue gray fur kind of come away. Oof. And so I would skip breakfast and I would, I guess there probably aren't any showers anymore, but I would go to the bathing area and get water and just sort of clean myself. And if I have any herbs left, um, apply some sort of salve on or salve on, uh, on my wounds, wounds from the prior day. And just for like a second, kind of just feel the ear, which ear it came out of, but like, feel the ear that um, that the creature had gone in and then eventually slooped out of. It's very tender. Um, in, perhaps in some ways more tender than your injury here. You uh, feel the softness of your fur and then that sort of coarse rough uh, uh, texture of where the, the lines are there. And then you reach up and it's sensitive to, t to the touch, uh, almost hot. And uh, you have a sense that it's going to perhaps be another few days before you can even explore and see is there scabbing inside? Is it Your hearing seems fine. Oh yeah, that's but, infected. Oh. So I would <laughs> take some kind of like cloth or leather scrap and almost wrap, not quite an eye patch, but almost like this diagonal, sort of like an eye patch, but just so that it covers my ear. Mm -hmm. And really just sort of take the time to kind of clean myself and patch myself up if, you know, I were to get injured in my many journeys and the next morning I sort of take the time to 
heal myself, right? You know, be be my own medicine man, and and um, you know, make sure that my wounds are treated, and that um, I am, and sort of just reflect and think about the night before, and uh, once I was done with all of that, join the others. You are there in the baths, um, finishing up with your salves and with your bandages as you hear a voice uh, behind you. You're near okay. And you turn and you can see man, the ogre known as Manius Loginius, standing there in the door frame, uh, seeing you uh, finish putting on the last of your gear and, 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 and still very sore from the previous day. Turn to him. Yes, I am okay. Are you feeling well? Man feels strong. I want to walk up to him and almost like just kind of take a look at him and get a sense of um, do I still feel like the same level of presence is there this morning versus last night? Make an insight check. God, which one do I want to use? Is this one? <laughs> oh, I think that's a twister. I think it's a twister. twister. Oh, oh yeah. One. Uh, yeah, yeah. The first yeah. roll was a twenty. And the second yeah. roll was a I think one. feast or famine. Twister. I believe yeah. we Come learned on. out of character that they were good. That did stop. I know, but, but your ear doesn't know that. that. No, I love, I love the twister. Yeah, I think yeah. it's fine. Yeah. I think we twist. That's what we have. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. And the ear would be distracted. There we go. Much better. Ooh, That's a, uh, much better. better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, skills. That's almost a barbarian crit. <laughs> 23. 20 that 23. Yeah. Uh, with a 23, you look at him and you size him up. You get a sense of how you read him when you first saw him coming out of the carriage after the explosion of uh, or, or, Ogreton, having a, uh, uh, staying on your guard because there was a chance uh, Sophilith had planted a, a, a nefarious, sinister idea in your mind that perhaps there was danger there. And there wasn't. They seemed to be wise, if not the brightest uh, fairy in the forest. Uh, and you see that same kindness that you see, saw before. You see that same um, uh ogre confidence, let's say. But in fact, you, uh, with a 23, I'll say the intelligence seems to have evened out. Not it, 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 to have dropped and then sort of come up. There's a there's light in those eyes. Wow. Um, there's a, a, a person in there, even if they no longer ex- are the smartest person in Ogreton. Do you remember what we spoke about last night? Oh, yes. Amun? Uh, Anam? Anam. Yes. Anam? Uh, Odin? Odin, yes. Drakkar? I can try it. Land. Man. Ogre. Three. Three. And I'll pat him on the shoulder. And just like a very half, like very slight, like half smile. Dornier, how learn more, honor the three? I will teach you. I will show you. And perhaps this is the, wait, this is the last day of the year? This is the 25th. And all <laughs> months uh, of the Icebound calendar, let's say, are 28 days. Okay, so you so know four days, days from now, it'll be the New Year's Day. It'll be a year's, uh, year's end. I will show you and help you prepare for a great feast for the last day of the year. Oh. To celebrate honor... And uh, 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 the the three to welcome in the year oh. and to 
wish the last year farewell. I will show you what I know from my home, but you can create your own traditions. You can pay respect to the triad however you wish. Man will share this with the ogres. Hold on. When the time comes, if there are priests or holy members of your tribe. Man! This is you? Smart. All right. Great worship. Then we will take some time to go through some rituals, perhaps, and prepare for the great feast. Good, good. I will tell other ogres, and we will plan our own traditions. Yes, their own traditions. You are very tall, and Manius is taller. Man is taller, and he slaps your arm, and it takes you a moment. <coughs> Not used to that. Soon. We'll be back. Much to do. Soon. And he turns and uh, races off. And when I say races, I, I mean like he's no longer walking uh, in a governorial like way. Uh, he's he's not. He doesn't have that like height of hubris that you met when you, he yeah. bounds he, he, he straight like he bounds down yeah. the tiled floor of this magnificent villa that was constructed and uh, you hear him disappear screaming uh, his wife's name uh, ready to uh, engage in some immediate conversation about what he's learned excited amazing so then yeah I would just join the others uh, and kind of just quietly as I can kind of go into the communal room and like just Stand against the wall. You sure. you go into the communal room, um, and I would say scrim. Uh, you have uh, slept in as much as you can. You wake up. You find a, a glorious feast for Barnabas. Uh, that Barnabas has prepared for the house. It seems uh, the, a, a a second breakfast of sorts, and. Uh, Taijen is nowhere to be found. Queenie seems to be deeply asleep. Barnabas, uh, after finishing cleaning, the three of you find yourself in that same communal room, uh, either with a plate uh, to eating or having having just eaten, uh, however you want, uh, um, as Yornir walks in. In as we're finishing up cleaning, I'll say, All right, little ones who are too small to help with the cooking, I have a very important role for you. And I'll try to call like all the ogre and like... Uh, it's like fucking episode one with all the little kids working on the pod racer. <laughs> <laughs> and are there any children? Are there? Yeah, yeah, I would say um, uh, there. there's a staggering of children. Um, they all are at, at, at different uh, ages is what I mean by staggering. All right. Now, little ones. Oh, I know that I said you were too small to help cook and we've enjoyed our breakfast, but you have the most important job of all. Do you know what that is? You are going to keep witches away. You are going to ward off the witches. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to hand out a rolling pin to each one of them. And I'm going to walk over to it's had to be like at least 100, 200 eggs. <laughs> and I just dump all the shells. Smash them quick, quick. Witches will come. <laughs> they go to fucking town and these, <laughs> on these shells. Um, oh. and some of them are are slamming down, and uh, a couple of them hit each other almost in this <laughs> in the in the chaos that ensues after your instructions. Um, uh, one or two very cleverly grabs both sides of the actual rolling pin and actually starts almost making a dough or a, p a powder out of these uh, out of these uh, eggshells. Um, but you look at, almost immediately are satisfied that uh, if, if there were going to be witches there are not going to be oh yeah that's a strong there. arm there yeah this remember to always smash your eggshells it's good luck <laughs> and i'll just be like 
laughing and I'll probably, you know, uh, get a second plate. And when you friends. grab a second plate, you catch uh, uh, Yornir making his way to the communal room and start to follow. Um, Scrim, you've made your way down. You have a plate. Uh, and you find yourselves, the three of you, um, for the first time after your uh, incredibly long day together. Which three? Uh, Barnabas, uh, Yornir, and the yourself. Taishan, right. Taishan is out in the world investigating what he might investigate, and Queenie is still dead asleep. Um, Scrim would have been keeping to himself, not being extra vocal for a change, but seeing Yornir walk up and seeing the perhaps the fresh scars, the, the scarring would be visible. Uh, yeah, you'd see at least some of that, right? Scrim would look up at Barnabas, maybe make eye contact, avoid it. <laughs> look, look to your ear and say, uh, "Hey, you all right? I will survive. Are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, food's good. Nice oh, job, well, thank you, Mister Savage Coach. That's enough. I mean, to be fair, it was mostly the my, my helpers. I just kind of supervised. I said that's enough." We all gonna be okay? What's got your gills, Mr. Staviscotch? What do you mean, what's got my gills? You were with us. You know what we faced. Alright? A little, cl- little too close to my own mortality for my own, you know, sake. Alright? Aye, but we're alive. Yeah, barely. Do you feel that? Do you feel the fact that we survived? Against all that. Against all that death. Against all that cosmic power, the five of us, we still live. Mm. We were meant to. And I'll gesture out to like the 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 group of the the ogres and the humans, kind of uh, milling about or doing whatever they're doing. And like, look at that! We're the ones who allowed them to build their new tribe. No matter what, even in the midst of all this destruction. Life still survives. All right. All right, Barnabas. You and I, we're going to have to just make do. So, I'm willing to say I accept your apology. I'll take this giant bite of bacon. (laughs) Yum. I'll just like wipe my my hand, my my uh, callous hand against my greasy face. Apology for what, Mister Stavis? God, I don't recall apologizing uh, for all of the uh, horrific, horrific transgressions you made against me, and uh, maybe perhaps the rest of us. Yornia looked shocked. All right, I'm willing to accept your apology and just move on for this and put it in the past. I do not recall what you were saying. I know, that's that. See, now I, I thought I was going mad, Mr. Yornir, because I, you know, I haven't hit the bottle in, in, in quite a while, in, in months yet, and I still can't recall what you're referring to. Yornir, do you want to be fighting with me too? Why would I wish to fight with you? Then you should probably just agree, and we should all just agree to accept Barnabas' apology and move on. Agree with what? The apology! Itself, the apology itself. Which Stop are, asking questions. You're making too much sense. No, 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 no it's fine. <laughs> ah. Where are they? They're in a communal room, and uh, though Not it's been our communal room. No, no, no. This no, is no, like no, the no. main room. They, they, though it's been cleaned up, um, this How is the same far room is this that from our communal room. Um, given everything that's happening and their voices being raised, I mean, I know that there's hammering going on outside. There's feet f- uh, feet moving back and forth. Um, if you wanted to stumble in. Cool. Keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, so I'm glad we're all in agreement we can just move on. It's fine. Yeah, Mr. Savas caught shit. I've already done something to offend. Uh, where's it? Where's Tai Shen? Anybody see Tai Shen? I didn't realize your sensibilities were so dainty. Is Queenie okay? Is Queenie all right? Tai Shen okay? Queenie Great. Queenie is fine. Uh, okay, good. I don't know where Tai Shen Good. Is. Fantastic. Why are you concerned with them all of a sudden? Well, because I care about my friends. We've all been through a harrowing experience, all right? And we're all just pretending like nothing happened. And here we are, and we lived, we lived, all right, to see another day. Until what? The next cosmic threat? The next bitter cold that 
takes my toes? What do you want from me? Huh? What do you want? I don't want anything from you. Faith certainly does, though. And you know what is next. We still need to retrieve the artifact. This is not changed. Aye. It is in more favorable hands, I truly believe. This does not mean that we can allow it to remain in the possession of the dragon. And what do you think she intends on doing with that thing? I do not know. I do not know if she understands what it is. You're not suggesting we steal this thing from a dragon, are you? No, we will not steal it. We will take it. We were given the quest by the spirit of the land. She will understand. Look, Yorne, you're a smart guy. I know you've been through a lot, but stealing is just taking with zero intention to return and without asking. I've done a lot of it, trust me. I did not say we would not ask. We will speak to the princess. We will explain that we are on a fate-bound quest to retrieve it at the behest of the land itself. And if she says no? Then we will take it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fantastic. No, I've never killed the proper dragon before. One with the, the wings and the flying. That would be quite the thrill. It is not often done successfully. So we should consider her an ally for now. Do you agree? Whether I agree or not, Mr. Yornir never has seemed to affected any outcome, has it? Certainly not. Well, I don't want to fight a dragon. You didn't ask me about the ally thing. I'm in agreement. Let's ally. Let's ally. <laughs> I, th I think that she perhaps will find us quite appealing to her band. But we have to remember that she did absolutely annihilate all of those poor wandering souls that we met on the solstice. This is true. But it is an aspect of survival they perhaps it was in her nature to do so are you prepared to face the possibility that without her involvement we all may have died on that ship they don't have to tell me twice I was there I saw it we were fucked without her I mean rightfully so I don't want to say it was an act of the gods, but, you know, come on. Well, you know, I bet that she doesn't keep her people as cattle. I bet she doesn't raise any kind of livestock if I had to wager. <laughs> you are right. Fate brought her to us. Fate gave us the opportunity. She gave us the opportunity. And now... Corruption that plagued this land is gone because of her. <clears throat> so again, I don't believe we need to kill the dragon. But I'm saying if it does come to it, I will be quite excited. That will be quite the tale. It might come to it. I will not. I'm ready either way. That. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Unbelievable. All right. All right. I, I mean, is, is there any, is there any liquor with this breakfast? I, it's is it too early. I don't even know what time. Have you had your coffee, Mr. Stavis Couch? Oh, fuck the coffee. I need the good stuff. This is unbelievable. Why don't we start with coffee? You're a little grumpy around the gills. <laughs> Just you, a suggestion. You turn and look at the door, and you can see that... Queenie is standing there. Queenie is standing there. <laughs> with two mugs of coffee. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I'm gonna walk up to Scrim. 
drink from one mug, drink from the other mug. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Miss March. How'd you sleep? Pretty well. Both for me. <laughs> I just chuckle. <juggled. laughs> well, there's plenty more where that came from. Where's Mr. Fire Blossom? He didn't come to breakfast. I looked out the window when I was leaving. He seemed to be out in the field working with Mylon. Already volunteering to work? <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. I mean, I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> come on. Smash, smash cut to Taishan right now. Uh, Taishan, you are deep in the bowels of a uh, freezing, freezing tunnel that's mostly oh. collapsed, and you're starting to make your way back down towards Ogreton to try and get a sense of where these pipes may have broken. Oh, it's so and cold happening. down here, but thankfully they gave me these blue overalls and this fetching red hat. <laughs> <laughs> and then we come back to the scene. Queenie's just arrived, and you're all talking about whatever it is you want to talk about. What is it that I missed? I know I slept in, but God, I was, I was exhausted. You missed nothing. Oh, all right. Besides, potentially, we may have to fight or befriend a dragon. I I'm sorry, that what? Is relevant. Can we have one day where we're not talking about the end of the world? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, Miss March. Let's enjoy and relish in the fact that we're still alive. We have the new year around the corner. We have a new tribe. Is there is there anything special that happens on the new year? I ask because inevitably... This moment of peace and calm will not last forever, and there is a day of change coming up soon, and with that, more than likely some horrible, horrible abomination is going to break from the ice and destroy another village somewhere, so is there anything we should worry about? Any, like, ritualistic things we need to make sure that we do so that we don't displease the gods that have kept us on this earth? Well, there have been blood sacrifice. No, I okay, can't think well. of anything. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. We went right for that option. Yeah, well, and I mean, meaning no offense, Mr. Yornir, uh, but I do recall that you did not uh, employ the circle of salt around yourself, and one of those strange crawfish creatures made it into your ear. Did the rest of us? Did the rest of us what? The salt circle you speak of. No, I did. Oh, yeah. I mean, I threw that shit everywhere. I bathed in it. Did I didn't. the other two? No. I don't think Tai Shen did the either. Well, all I'm saying is that you're tempting fate. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's three out of five of us that didn't. And one of us got fucked. Yeah, but that's still a 50-50 split. And fate does not bend to salt. Or any yeah, other it does species. to blood. <laughs> hmm? The blood is for the gods, not for faith. Yeah, as far as I know, I read a book once that said that the gods don't like their food to be seasoned all that well, so they probably don't like salt. Oh, I'm saying, yeah, and I'll clink my uh, my pipe against my uh, spoon earring that I made with the hex mark in it. Oh, I'm saying. Scrim's ears like swollen over <laughs> 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 like, oh, Me too. <laughs> Fuck! Ah. My my uh, hex charm, my seabird tattoo, and a good amount of salt kept me safe. Warded off all the spirits. The spirits what? Oh, the, the ogres. But you didn't go down where the spirits were. We were in the vicinity. <laughs> you never well, know when there's this ghost, Miss March. <laughs> well, I was with you the whole time. I didn't have one of those. That's because there were no spirits there. You never know. I would have, because I didn't have one of those things. Oh, I'm saying, why take the risk? It's a peace of mind. Welcoming, I told you that as soon as that albatross, that seabird was killed by that merchant, that our voyage was doomed. We invited that bad luck upon us. I we, hate to admit it, but he's right. We've been paying for that mistake for months. I'm pretty sure that's the source of all of this. 
Why should have killed him? I don't him? think so. I think the source of all of this is that we got on a boat with the money grubbing butthole and we sailed out in the middle of nowhere and we trusted our fate to someone who had no idea what they were doing. I don't think it had anything to do with that saber. I don't know. I mean, you make a really good case, but on the other hand, there's... A dead seabird. Sea yeah, thank you. You took the words right out of my mouth. How did you know? You're right. It is very obvious it was a seabird. <laughs> uh, I don't even want to agree with Bonobos. <laughs> okay, what's going on between the two of you? Why are you so I mad? frankly don't know, Miss March. We, uh, he apologized. It's all good. We're moving Bonobos past it. Anyway, where's Tai Shen? Anybody I, see Tai Shen? I didn't hear it. He did. It's fine. We don't have to <laughs> talk you about it. Did apologize to Scram? <laughs> oh, yes. I don't, oh, yes, don't have did. any recollection. Oh, I don't have any recollection. <laughs> what did he did it. He apologized. <laughs> what did you apologize for? <laughs> Frankly, Miss March, your guess is as good as mine. Why would you accept an apology from a guy that don't even know what he did wrong? <laughs> it did happen. It's fine. Anybody see Dai Shen? Well, I'm pretty sure he's in the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told you. He's out. Oh, oh, that's right. Of course. <laughs> it cuts to me. I have a, I have a plugged in flashlight. <laughs> He's with his he's with his niece May Ouija. Yeah. <laughs> uh Taishan, you are actually making your way back oh, um, thank to God. the town. And the reason is because you reached a uh wall of ice. Uh it was not uh that it was destroyed, oh, but shit. you are seeing that the temperature is, is underneath the city is no longer providing that warmth that it was. Mm. Everything seems to be getting back to normal, let's say. Mm. And so after exploring for a couple uh, hours and uh, uh, spending your morning doing uh, the investigatory work, uh, trying to warm pipes and having no success, um, you get the sense that two things are happening. One, the ability for the villas to have regular running water, warm water or cold or otherwise, uh, is going to be impossible without tremendous effort. Or, sorry, not or, and, and that there's nowhere for the water to go. That the town, there's this tremendous waterfall pouring into it, will is slowly being submerged by freezing, cooling water. And that it is turning into something of a lake. The the waterfall that was pouring into where the ship was is now like filling up. The it's waterfall right? is was uh, yeah yeah. There was the crevasse. Uh -huh. There was the town. Uh -huh. The town exploded, sunk into the crevasse, <laughs> and now the waterfall is slowly, slowly, slowly filling with water that is freezing and is already up to the point that you reached as deep as you went into the pipes. Not not even as f halfway. As far as you would have gone, had to have gone to reach the bridge and reaching the uh, the the, the Nautiloid ship, any of those things. It is it is freezing under there. Oh no! And you turn, having these conclusions, feeling pretty confident about it, and your stomach is grumbling. You haven't had breakfast. All you've had is a bit of perfect tea. And turning, you will make your way back to to the the manor, and you you can go there however you like. <sighs> Well, I'll just take the path, I think. You do take the path. And I would say it was about this time that you, you make your way to the, the bathroom. You have all uh, been talking and sharing these, um, uh, this conversation for uh, perhaps not, not that much longer when Taishan arrives at the door. Mr. Fire Blossom! Good morning, everyone. If I saved you a plate, I'd offer to heat it up, but I know you don't need it. Oh, thank you. I'm so hungry. What's everyone been talking about? Uh, we're going to befriend a dragon. What? Or kill it. Or kill it. What? I mean, those are our two options. Oh, oh, and Scram or and Barnabas apologized to Scrim about something Barnabas doesn't even remember doing. You finally apologized to Scrim? Finally apologized for all your various transgressions. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I'm bewildered. It, I mean, I was thinking the same thing too, but I didn't know what particular one. Like, Scrim oh, well, well I don't know what to, they are. I just know that Scrim's always saying that. Fill swoop? We don't have to belabor the point. It's fine. We're all friends again. It's oh, great. Oh, are you trying to take oh. the high road right now? 
I don't even know what that means. You know, you know what? We're gonna leave that there. What have you been up to, my friend? <sighs> well, I went out to see if I could help with the effort to rebuild the town so that as winter encroaches, uh, everyone can continue to survive. I, the, the, they were having a problem, problem with the water getting to the crop, and I went to investigate, and I realized I don't know anything about plumbing. <laughs> oh, and, that seems like a problem in and of itself. And... Could you pull your the, pants up? I can see your butt crack. You actually can't. It's overalls. They're strapped <laughs> over my shoulders. Well, there's a hole. I said, there's a hole. Oh, no. Oh, oh God. It's one of those crack. flap there's a, oh, 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 it's a, They need a hole for that. Oh, the, uh, somebody. I can't reach. My arms don't work this oh, way. I'll get it. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no wonder it was cold uh, down so there. So indecent. Oh. Um, the, the waterfall where we were before that, that led into where the ship was... It's filling up the crater where the ship crashed, and it's freezing over. No, that can't be good. Didn't look it, but uh, any of the water, any of the things that the town had enjoyed to prosper previously uh, have run out. Uh, they're, they're, Drakkar is taking them back. I mean, it makes sense now that the invader is gone from the host. It's not providing it with the things that it needs to keep the host alive. Hmm. I don't know how else we help, but... Get him prepared for a really, really rough one. Oh, I was going to try to teach at least some of, them how, some of them how to fish. We could take a band of people down there while the water's still running and still fresh and try and fill up as many barrels as possible with water. Uh, teach them how to... Uh, Y'all know how to distill your water. Clean it up. Boil Aye. it. Yeah. No, I've never had to do that. All right, well, I'm gonna have to teach them how to do that. That way, they have at least enough to get by. After that, they can start melting the snow. They need to really locate. Pants to where? Closer to the hot springs, or they could freeze to death. Do we know how far we are from the hot springs? Do you you have to say it like that? What do you mean? Not, look at this! Look at this villa. This house is should provide plenty of shelter if they appropriately eat it. For all of them, there aren't that many of them left. They'd have to move all. It's of a these. villa. To thrive, they will need their own homes. They will need to be able to build. And look and at grow all livestock. of the remnants of that dynamite destroyed. They can build new homes. Are they going to? <laughs> Keep all the swine inside. All I'm sorry, the, the wine? The swine. Oh, I'm, why are you worried about drinking right now? The wine, too. Can it all fit in the single villa? I don't know. Are they going to spread out across the five villas with no man's land in between? Maybe. It doesn't have to be no man's land if you put men in it. Would they be able to. <laughs> Everybody, everybody gets a uh, point uh, because of what Queenie said. <laughs> Compelling. Listen, Yoni, you seem to know a lot about these people, right? I mean, they were here long before the those horrific monsters were. They got to have some sort of innate survival instinct, right? Well, Maybe give them a little spark. I'm gonna say something that I think is worth taking into consideration. These people have been told what to do and who to be since the day they were born. Why don't we just ask them what they want to do? This is okay, I just say this. If they want to stay here, we let them stay here. Unless they want to live on root vegetables and perhaps a little bit of dairy and blood, I mean, that this is acceptable. They could stay. What do you mean dairy and blood? Eat blood and dairy. What do you mean eat blood? What do you mean not, not eat blood? I don't understand. <laughs> They're you... not vampires. Why are you trying to make them eat blood? Oh, I mean, blood is very nutritious. When you're caught in the doldrums and all you have are not... seagulls I, and sea we're... turtles. You don't no, eat just... blood? What? No, I don't be... No. Have we been eating blood this entire campaign? <laughs> I mean, I haven't had this in a while. I mean, in a survival situation, <laughs> we have been eating blood for the past three months. When things oh. don't grow. We're even hunting. It's... 
I mean, can't they cook it? What? They they could cook it. You just want to boil blood and drink it? I don't want to talk to you guys right now. I should. I should go back to sleep. I'm just saying, from a resourceful point of view, you can eat blood without killing your livestock. This is all. I'm just gonna put a tap in them. You just think, we don't need to go over this. My point no, is, no, I don't want to. I'm disgusted. If they're used to agriculture and farming, winter is coming. Nothing is going to stop it, and Sorry. I don't believe. He said the thing. Winter is coming. Oh. I said the thing. I guess. They could stay here if they would like to. You were making this place seem like it is the most inhospitable place in the world. And it doesn't have to be. Even in the even in the deepest of winter, there is still life. What did the sewer look like, Taishan? Well, I, I could barely even get close to it. As I approached, it was became obvious that as the crater was filling up, sections of it were completely cut off. Frozen. From eyes? That's right, like ice walls, that sort of thing. Yeah, like ice walls. It was kind of like the ice was inevitable. Well, the ice is inevitable, unless they go closer to the hot springs. But I won't. I won't force them to do that. But Yone, I think that there are, there are constructs here. There are many homes. How would they would they be able to build shelter so so far into the dead of winter near the hot springs? Maybe that to move is a smarter choice. But could they not weather the the extreme elements here in the interim. The, they could if they chose to. But there what what be else is outside of having a nest, sauna? What near the hot springs is it that you're looking for them to have access to? A slightly more hospitable climate that they're used to. They've spent decades existing in that they know how to use, that know how to yield crop or raise it, livestock in. Not saying that if they really don't want to, they have to go. I won't force them to do anything. Well, we could share these findings with Mylan. He's leading the rehabilitation effort, and uh, he knows there he wasn't in Ogreton captive the entire time. He would know the area better than any of us. Wait, you talked to Mylan? I did. Did he punch you? No. What a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, no, no, Mylan needs to apologize. Well, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. he completely blindsided me, walked up and he punched me in the face. Mylan even, punched you in the face? Never even saw him coming. Kind of fucked up, if you ask me. Oh, that's so weird. I he saw his hands. He's quite a bit taller than you. He didn't yeah, have he was, I mean, he, was, he just walloped me. Bam! I never saw it. it was, you woke up and just, just, just chose stormy seas, Mr. Savasyad. I mean, it wasn't today. It was a while ago. But yeah, I mean, I just woke up. I was confused. I was scared. And then bam, out of nowhere, right in the kisser. What did you do to him? I don't know. Huh. I think well, that's that surprising. we all did some things to Mylan and Scrim just took the blame. What else is new? Good lord. What did we do to Did Mylan? you ask Mylan to apologize to you? I didn't get the chance. He stormed off. And then the next time we saw him, you insulted him. He stormed off. Yeah, I was a little <laughs> mad at him. Oh, goodness. Anyway, uh, not, that's neither here nor there, you know, I mean, other than the loose molar I have, but yeah, continue, please. <laughs> Mylan, yeah, go ahead, talk about your hero, oh, Mylan. Just, my, my, you, 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 hear, you hear a knock, and you see Daisy enter the room, having heard none of this, and she's picking away at a plate full of bacon and uh, Howl's Moving Castle Feast, <laughs> and uh, what are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about the fact that your dad punched Scrim in the face, probably because he's pissed off that your sister died, sorry. Um, and that that's somehow our fault. And, um... Oh, you think we wrapped everything up yeah, with Mylan? I think everything is fine. Everything is fine. Can you can you forgive Mylan for punching you in the oh, face? Oh, well, yes, I guess. Scrim is just in a forgiving mood. Oh, Mylan, It's I'm a new you. year! It's a new day, a new year, a new tribe, a new Ogreton. <laughs> I'm... We you're should, gonna owe him we should another, rejoice! Barnabas, if you don't stop talking, you're going to owe him another apology. I think that's just how he says hello from where he's from. <laughs> that's what he <laughs> I, I give, I, I give uh, Taishan a very, like, sly, like, 
like like side Why grin, side eyes. Why do you look like uh, Scrim when you do things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. As he does it, I, I just I think back to that moment and he becomes a goblin. <laughs> and I say nothing, and I, but Scrim very yeah. clearly goes from frustrated to like sly, like. I just very genuinely smile back and yeah, nod. you know, yeah. we uh, share we share a knowing glance. Yeah. We have only been live for fifty five minutes and forty nine seconds, so we must have actually lost stream then. I believe it was a Twitch issue. Daisy, what? That was just two. Oh no! Wait a minute. No, this is twelve two eighteen. Yeah, which is weird. Yeah, because that's also wrong. It wasn't tomorrow. It wasn't. I'm not saying it was. I'm just saying it was whatever. <laughs> About about us three, these three. My, was my dad told me. <laughs> my dad told me that he punched Scrim, and why he was so angry at all of you. He also told me that you blamed him for my sister's death. Oh no, I didn't blame him for your sister's death. I just told him he couldn't blame us for her death because we're not the ones that sent two young girls out into the frozen wilderness by themselves and expected them to be able to survive on their own. And that he's lucky that we found the two of you when we did or you might not be here either. So he should be grateful for the small um, for the small thing. That is not how he heard that conversation. Well, that's okay, because he punched Scrim. Yeah, and he owes us more. both an apology. Unbelievable. I think he's okay now. He seems... Oh, I'm I mean, glad look we're at all him. okay now. Okay, well, I'm glad that he is okay now. <sighs> that someone else has done all the dirty work. I don't know why everyone else is upset with No, me. neither do I, Mr. But Floyer Blossom. You didn't get punched! We had a delicious I, breakfast. We had we no a, reason to punch me. I need some coffee. Does anyone want any? Oh. Yes, I'll have yeah, some two coffee. for me. Okay, oh. sounds good. I will be right back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll have some coffee. <laughs> we were actually discussing how best to help your people rebuild and survive the elements here. We've survived many winters. We've survived many winters with the protection of Sotholith's influence. With that gone, the waterfall is freezing up. The harsh winters of Drakkar are coming in. And I think you're going to experience what that's like for the first time. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Barnabas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go, young lady. <laughs> um, she thinks about this really hard for a moment, and then sort of, uh, what what else can we possibly do? There's nowhere to go. There's no other towns or cities. Your name? Do not need to live in a city or a town. There is no more town here. There are five buildings. You build your own village where it is more hospitable. You are very fortunate that not too far away there is a natural element of the land that brings heat from the earth to the surface. Didn't we have heat here now? Why? Why? Well, Daisy, the thing is, the entities that lived beneath the, the waterfall, they were like, they were like a parasite that leached onto this land, and they filled its host, the land, with what it needed to survive the ability for heat it provide they provided the livestock that you all ate and the the level of intelligence that the ogres needed to run a civilization like ogreton was with them gone as i think you can tell the ogres no longer have that same mm. intelligence the land will no longer have the heat and the running water and the animals for you to feast upon and so now all those things, remember when you were living in that house with your sister and you had to, she had to go out and hunt and that's how she met us. Mm -hmm. It will be like that where you have a home where you can heat it with fire, but you will be provided nothing else. And do you think you can do that here with the structures pre-existing or do you think it would be better to move to a place where there is natural heat, like from the hot springs? 
but you're going to have to make the structures yourselves. I don't know. And I, I think that's a conversation you should have with your dad. The swine will not survive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yuri is in rare form. Rare form tonight. <laughs> but, they're, but they're my favorite. They're the cutest. They won't survive. I don't want to point them there. <laughs> well, to be We've fair. We've just eaten 200 pounds of bacon for breakfast. Oh, the swine are already don't gone. Don't worry. If if they uh, will. Out of the wreckage, I will build the Draco- the biggest smoker that Drakkar has ever seen. <laughs> we can slaughter the lot of it, and we'll we'll do smoked salt pork. It'll last. It'll it'll he last years. Pork shoulder. It'll la- <laughs> it will last years. Uh, that's uh, I I think I can accomplish that. The in a cattle, handful of days. The cattle will not survive. The crops will not survive. It is because of them. They made all of this possible. I've never seen the plants and beasts like this survive in the true tundra. You need to get somewhere warmer. I've just come from the waterfall where all of your water was sourced. And it's it's filling up the crater where the ship crashed. It, it's freezing over. You won't be able to use it. You won't gain anything from that. It might benefit us to speak with your dad and trek to where the hot springs are and, and just get a better sense of the situation there. If we think that you might be able to build. Look, I, I don't want to make any assumptions here, but uh, I thought uh, I thought you weren't really interested in sticking around with the ogres. I thought you wanted to see what was out there. I do. I do. I just didn't... I didn't realize that... This place would be unsafe for anyone who wanted to stay. It's hard to explain, you know? Well, I certainly don't know anything about, you know, ogre biology, but, you know, I kind of assumed they'd be all right in the, in the cold, but, you know, Yorni knows more than I do, so I trust him. They could be all right in their natural state, but their natural state is also to consume. I sort of gesture it. Oh. I n- say no more. I get what you're uh, picking up, what you're putting down. The lifestyle you have lived. Can you grab my sandwich out of there? I could go for a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, oh, good I'm Reuben. Oh, thank you. A good Reuben. Um, the lifestyle mm. that you have <laughs> grown accustomed you. to, that your people, the ogres, have lived on, it is, is artificial. It is not natural. And because of this, unless you want to adapt, you could try to survive the winter here, you could. Your crops, your livestock may not survive, will likely not survive. We should move now. Before the winter comes, yes. Well, how many, how long would it take us to get everybody with everything that we need to those hot springs? Do we have time to do that before the new year? Because we gotta, we gotta start cutting people up. <laughs> no, excuse me. Cutting people? What? <laughs> well, Yornir said we had to do some kind of horrific animalistic sacrifice to the gods so that the new year doesn't bring in horrors of an even more extreme. And what? I'm not, I'm not one to be okay with these kind of things, but I also don't understand much about these religions, and I don't want to disrespect them, so we have to do it. I, I have literally never once agreed with Tai Shen, and he and I are on the exact same word of the same line of the same page of the same book. <laughs> what? I thought we agreed all the time. But also, what? <laughs> That's what you already said. We have to do blood sacrifice. Why wouldn't you disrespect him then? You want to kill a bunch of people? No, I don't what? personally want to do it. You I said, said you had blood to... sacrifice. Yeah. I'm like a goat or something. <laughs> oh, thank God. I've been sitting here thinking to myself, how do I justify this? <gasps> Who do we even choose? Oh, do I gracious. have to do it? What are they going to do without me? <sighs> do I count? I'm a rabbit. 
I think I saw ghosts around here. That's what I was thinking. Oh, thank God. That is so much better than I thought. The pigs aren't going to make it anyway. (laughs) Oh, I didn't pick anyone. I was still in the conundrum of if I sacrifice myself, am I I people enough or am I too rabid? I pick bacon 100%. (laughs) You're eating bacon currently. Oh, not this bacon. (laughs) Oh, oh, (laughs) Daisy, did bacon do something to you? You got a crush. No. No. Sure? <laughs> no. No. He's got, I, I am gonna. I would like to roll it. In he's got. <laughs> he's got a club all the way up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did kind of notice that about him. Do you think he's pissed that his name's Bacon? My my name was some sort of weird stew, Alcatra. That sounds like a cat thing. I don't know. This is weirdly complimental, frankly. I like your new name much better. Me too. I mean, <laughs> Me I'm too. not biased or anything since I named you, but... Thank you. Anyway, I'm glad we don't have to cut people up. Well, how do we determine... The ogres are all about this this uh, this feast thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're near put into their mind, I believe you told us about that, <sighs> that we have to do all this stuff for the new year, which is coming up in like three days. How do we go about doing all that and then also moving y'all to the hot spring before. I just don't think we have the time. Oh, you okay. think that we should have a great feast, celebrate the new year proper. And then leave. And then we get everyone situated. Yeah. And they can set up scavenging parties, make some sledges, and have their oxen just... They can spend months scavenging those ruins and still not have all the supplies in They have oxen here? Oh, I don't know if they geld them. Perhaps they're just bulls. You're all standing there in this communal room in the villa of what once was the House of Bliginius, the House of Knowledge and of Education, and talking about where do you go next? What do you do? Uh, how do you make choices as a group? Uh, how do you perhaps guide this sudden new community of ogre and man? And uh, how do you face the winter? Winter isn't coming. Yes, it is true that there is a a cooling, a cooling happening in this space. It's edging. It's edging. It's not coming, it's It's, edging. It's cooling. However, there is... Winter is here. Winter is upon you. It is late in the 12th month of the year, and uh, you are approaching the middle of winter very much. So what are we going to do? Should we pick up now? I feel like the danger is over. Can we just see through the new year, perhaps? Perhaps even see through the winter together and, and, and figure this all out when things warm up? There's surely enough food. Well, Daisy, <clears throat> I hate to break it to you, but you could stay here with your dad and with everyone if that's the choice that you all make for yourselves but we're not going to be able to stay with you we've got things we have to do we can help get you to the hot spring if that's where you choose to go or we can help you start to build up here to make it through the winter once all that's said and done the five of us are going to have to pack up our stuff and get i've made my choice i have a bag it's got my bow in it. You want to come with us? I wish I could have joined you for your confrontation to free us. I'm so glad I believed in you that you were able to do that. Young lady, I'm going to say something you're not going to like hearing. I think that it's a mistake if you do come with us. I think despite how capable Mr. Mylan is, they need as many heads properly screwed on to their shoulders as possible, if you're catching my meaning. And where we're going, death is more likely than not. And I'm not saying you're weak. I'm not saying that an extra bow wouldn't be helpful, but I'm saying is that if it's 
she does have a horde of strange lizard creatures and other savages with her. And she's a gigantic dragon that rules these people. Annihilated an entire civilization. <clears throat> There's very little we can do to protect you. I don't think we need to protect you, Daisy. I think you can protect yourself. But I wouldn't think about that dragon or what you're capable of. I would think about your dad. He has lost one daughter already. Think about what he would do to him to lose you too. Now I know, because I've seen you, what you could do at our side. And I would be happy to have you there. Because I love you. You know I do. But think about what you could do for these people. What they can't do for themselves. And only you can with the experience you had out in the winter with your sister. And with your travels with us. That is invaluable experience that none of them will be able to get. And only you have. Would you leave them and your dad without that? Knowing we can't be there to help you? You don't have to make a choice right now. And whichever choice you choose to make, you know I will accept it. If you want to come with us... I will link my arm with you and we'll skip out off into the sunset together. But if you choose to stay, you know I will find the time to come visit. This March is right. It is your choice. You have the freedom now to do whatever you want. You could leave Jakar if you'd like to. You could bring all of your people to the sea, build a boat, and get off of this horrid rock. You can do whatever you'd like. What I'm saying is now that you have your people, you have a new tribe, you have your family, isn't that worth fighting for? There are plenty of battles here, south, north, wherever you go. What, <clears throat> besides this terrible worldly business that we've gotten ourselves mixed up in, is that fight more worth it than the fight for your father? For the people you've grown up with? It's your choice. I hear you. I really do. I... Before I finished this bacon, I thought... I was going to go with you 100% of the way. That I'd... <clears throat> that I wanted to see the world. I wanted to travel. I know every tree in that forest. I know every dip and ridge of that mountain line. This is the only world I've ever known. And my father fought to try to free me. But you're right. Maybe, maybe it makes sense for me to stay to see the winter through. To help my father be a family, be together, and make sure that everything is okay here first. That's what heroes do, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what they sing the songs about. People like us, we're pilgrims, as Mr. Yornir says. We're, we're wayfarers. We don't have any people of our own. We have each other and we have this strange destiny that we, we've been set upon by a giant hairy beastie with a horn the land itself so to speak well and your fate has intertwined with ours I don't think that your fate ends potentially dying cold with the rest of us devoured by a dragon frozen into a block of ice. I think it's with your people. Or on your own, if you choose to. With my people. I just know if I had your opportunity, I'd never give that up. At that age. You have your whole life ahead of you. I just... I don't want to say goodbye. 
if you come with us. It is likely that you will perish. I don't know if that's true. It was by nearly a miracle that she survived. Or it was a by single, fate. I believe it was fate. To bring her right here. If you did not get so... Chosen by fate, I suppose. Again. I do not know if I will be able to protect you next time. Yeah, I'm... I'm a Yorni and Barnabas. You gotta stay, you can't hack it. <laughs> I can do my shield thing. You don't know that? You don't know you can control it? You, no, no. Just best for everybody, you know? Maybe. That's not very nice, yeah, well, I'm not a very nice person, all right? It's nothing to do with nice. It is just the reality of the situation. I'm a farm girl from Yona. Your fate is to go the rest of the way. And you don't know what Daisy's fate is. Don't try and scare her into whatever choice you want her to make. The beast that Let almost her ended her life. Let her make the choices for herself. The same way I stepped out of Yona and made my choice. That I was not going to be a farm girl, but something else. I did not once say that she should choose one way or another. I Telling just, her, if you go, you're going to die. I said it is likely she will die. I did not say she should choose one way or another. If she chooses to come with us and risk her own death, that is totally fine. That's what we all risk. Yes, we do. I don't think any of us are more capable than Daisy, or Daisy more capable of, of, than us. From a hit point perspective. <laughs> <laughs> From a certain, you don't point, know that. A, a certain point of view. <laughs> you don't know that. You don't know that. So wise, I can do math. <laughs> if I had not cast that slow spell at the last second, <laughs> we wouldn't be having this conversation. I would have no hope. <laughs> Daisy, I, I, I too come from a people, a people I left behind for the time being, people who, who needed me for quite a while, and there I have a niece, and if I had left too early, I, I don't know who she would be now, I don't know what memories I would have of her or, or she of me, and I too wanted to adventure, I too sought what could be beyond the mountains that surrounded my home? And then something called to me. And it was a great dragon. And you need to find that dragon in your heart. You'll know beyond doubt when it is time for you to take to the seas and explore other areas. It doesn't have to be now. And if we move on, and you stay with your family, it's not a goodbye. It's just see you later. All right. I'm gonna go get more bacon. All right, when you, when you see bacon, you let him know. But if he wants to change his name, he can. I think that's probably wise. Do you want to name him? Or do you think he can choose his own name? I think name? he can change his own, choose his own name. After some of the things you've said to me, I don't think he'd like the name I want to give him. <laughs> Let's pick this up in a few days. Yeah, I want to. We got a lot to do. I want to see the new year. Will you be staying then? Till then? Oh yeah. Well, we're, we're gonna make make sure you guys are at least. Well on your way. Okay. Before we leave. Okay. And we, we won't leave without giving you a heads up. We Thank wouldn't you. do that to you. You know that. Thank you. <clears throat> Daisy makes her way, and uh, you enjoy the remainder of the day. 
And what I will say for the sake of brevity is that what catches on over the course of this day is that there will be a great feast, a New Year's Eve feast. A feast uh, to rival all feasts, and people are already starting to prep a tremendous amount of food uh, and and gearing towards uh, a uh, a midnight celebration, uh, celebrating very specifically the moment that the night turns and the middle of the night is reached and the new year is arrived at. Uh, it seems that the ogres have picked their traditions for themselves. And they have agreed that there is going to be not just food, but games and celebration. Uh, not not, not uh, uh, just for the sake of revelry, but to honor those who were lost in the destruction of their city, those who they called friends, their family members. Uh, a, a, a chance to mourn, certainly, but also to share in the lives of those who remain. And that there will be very much gift giving, presents, uh, opening of uh, 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 trinkets or, or, or baubles. And you have the next few days to think about what you will contribute to each other in however, whatever direction. This is, this is a relaxing time. As you are thinking. I should have done this on about what you might receive and getting giddier and excited about what you are are maybe per thinking about for each other or for anyone else. You are watching what Tai Shen described. Not just the slow accumulation of water consuming the ruined city of Ogreton, the charred, blackened, fragmented wreckage that was buildings churches, storefronts, shops, a coliseum, or a hippodrome, if you will. And it is freezing. It is becoming a frozen lake out there, and it continues to grow up the side of the mountain, grow up and freeze, crunching and crunching and crunching up until it is but still and glistening. And the snow returns. It's the last day of the year now and you've had time to prepare and to eat to sleep to talk amongst yourselves to think about what you might do next and you wake up on the morning of new year's eve all together or perhaps separately if you've chosen to uh to do that let's say it's breakfast and you wake in of new moment. year's eve breakfast. of new year's eve. eve yes yes three days have gone by now and you are at the final day of the year. <clears throat> oh, you know about you. I'm making monkey bread. Uh, um, would we say that we've moved to the hot springs? Or are we still we're staying? We're, no, we're yeah, staying. We, we decided oh, we were going to okay. try to move after the feast. Got it. Got it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're still at the manor. You're still at the villa. Um, you're, you're, uh, uh, however long it would take you to walk four hours, uh, four miles, I'm sorry, to the lake now. And, uh, this particular morning, there are snowflakes in the, in the, in the sky. Big, thick, fluffy, slow floating snowflakes. Mm -hmm. Just coming down like this, very soft, hitting the ground. Um, Myelin has showed tremendous leadership in this moment and though the dm did a pretty poor job in the first session of this campaign describing his abilities as first mate you now get to cherish and appreciate his administrative abilities <laughs> this is refreshing and new to me <laughs> <laughs> oh this was canon all along i suppose oh not new at all but yeah. i'm not surprised question mm. do we when it comes to this gift giving, do we understand this as a tradition of Drakkar, of nature, or of the ogres? What is the what is the the, the weight of this gift giving tradition and the coming of the new year? Is it something that that 
Yornir is hammering into us? Or? Man, man has been pestering Yornir throughout the last few days. And it is uh, trying to get a sense of tradition. And just as Yornir mm. said on that first day, the traditions are your own. What is important is honoring the triad, honoring the the land and uh, 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 Odin and and uh, um, uh, Anam. Uh, I, 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 Anam. 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 Uh, making sure that the gods that he respects, that he's passing on to the ogres, is meaningful. The nature of gift giving seems to have been a spontaneous, perhaps, uh, uh, arrival. The nature of the feast idea seems to have been something that Yornir may, or, may have said. Uh, uh, more and more traditions are starting. It, it, it's one of those um, uh, situations where someone has an idea and then yes and, and yeah. yes and, and yes okay. and, but through the lens of ogres. Then I would just say, uh, before Barnabas goes, that for those three days leading up to the feast, uh, Scrim is very intentionally doing very little work, mm -hmm. uh, and that anybody who's paying attention would just see him coming and going. No work is demanded of you. Yeah, fuck that. I mean, it, it, Tai Shen. It, all of you experience uh, experience uh, reverence. In in you you are heroes of this town. Um. If there would be a general agreement, Barnabos, I would have suggested putting on a carnival mm. for the... Uh, you motherfucker, <laughs> I love that shit. You're a genius. Uh, putting on a carnival for the for everyone, justifying it in the sense that it's going to blow through a lot of rations, but basically it's going to fucking suck. And so giving basically a bit of morale to get everyone through the winter, uh, which he would have experienced while wintering on whaling ships and tide hunting ships, uh, icebound, but not horribly destroyed. Um, and so then basically taking whomever would want to come with them and uh, go to, there was a house of the arts, right? And trying to basically pilfer any kind of costumes, the theater, uh, any kind of props and base, er, props and sets and the props that you can source and trying to build whatever he can for our, like a big our, carnival. What was at the villa? Uh, okay. Only yeah. only those five houses at the very perimeter of the land yeah. were not sundered by the great explosion yeah. that destroyed the center. But there is enough. These were very wealthy houses, and so if you're working with human or ogre, you or going by yourself you are able to go to different houses and find pretty much anything that you were looking for uh, in, in, in hopes to build a carnival for this purpose. All right. So, yeah, I'll have, like, giant uh, stretches of, like, canvas or, or hide or whatever and, like, painting, like, I'll, I'll be painting all of, like, the vistas uh, that I, I would have experienced in my travels. It'd be beautiful tropical islands I see. or, like, different landmarks and basically trying to set it up for the feast to have kind of this big carnival and basically giving costumes to whoever would want it. After getting a sense of the day, Barnabas is uh, chiefly focused on these activities. And as New Year's Day uh, arrives, uh, it is just softly being covered by snow. But we haven't covered what Taishan and Queenie want to do with their three days. I was actually going to suggest if Queenie uh, would also like to do it, that um, I would think with the running water now totally gone, I would try and spend uh, those days working uh, and going to the <laughs> going to the crater lake. Uh, and I don't know if it's like totally freezing over the top, but if it is, heating edges of it to melt it down enough to source it into potentially barrels that we can bring back to have a uh, degree of like on hand running water and potentially learning the process of distilling or purifying water if, if we would need to. It's only a few days. Think about how much you got done the first, uh, just, just, just the day before these three days. And you are able to, um, um, with the ogres being as strong as they are, and with the humans being as intelligent as they are, even without the uh, communication skills that they've been uh, stripped of, you are able to talk to them, go down there, and carve huge cubes of ice that then can be strapped onto the back straight uh, frozen style and, and dragged back up to uh, 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 the town which then can either be melted down into crisp 
clear, beautiful uh, sky water, or uh, kept as ice for whatever purpose. You, uh, 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 ironically, for Taishan, become an ice master in these in these few three days. Um, but uh, you are you are. It helps that you have the power of fire because you can make clean cuts. You can uh, uh, guide others to showing them how to think about the water, and it does seem to have leveled off by this by this uh, uh, New Year's Eve day. Uh, it doesn't seem to be filling anymore because the waterfall itself seems to have frozen. Wherever the water is going, or perhaps it's just totally frozen on the mountain, we're talking about 15, 10, 5 degree weather. Cold. Not unsuitable for your climate appropriate wear or your resistances, certainly. It's chilly, but as long as you stay active, you're able to... Um, do what you need to to make sure that there is plenty of bathing water, plenty of drinking water, cooking water, whatever is needed in the form of these great ice blocks that you're dragging up from these from the lake. Uh, Queenie would actually spend her three days. I'm trying to remember. Did I have Honey's bow? Because I know that Daisy took the bow above the hearth in the house. And I believe Queenie took Honey's bow, but it's important if she has it or not. I think I, you gave it to her. I or Mylan. Yeah. I didn't I, give it to Mylan. You, you gave it to her. You gave your bow Daisy. when you arrived, and then you put Honey's bow because you retrieved it from Honey and put it in the place. And so then Daisy would have gotten Honey's bow. That's right. Okay. Do you do you want to? Have... So I would I would go to Daisy then and ask if I could borrow Honey's bow, and I would take it for three days and go off into the woods. You you turn... and I would use my busy as a bee feature to increase my survival to plus fourteen. Ooh. Damn, <laughs> yeah. Jesus! I know. Thanks, Bear. My Good pleasure. Luck. <laughs> Good yeah. luck. Um. Queenie's almost nowhere to be seen during these few days. I basically sleep out there. You I sleep out there. Out. Um, you eat out there. And I'm, I'm solely working, having heard that there were gifts to be given, I am solely working on making gifts for the people that are important to me. And, and uh, occasionally kill, killing a, a mm -hmm. snow hare or a bird or something to feed on. There is this one snow hare that you just cannot... I'm looking specifically... As, as good as you are as a hunter, you cannot get this one snow hare. It's remarkable. Yeah, fuck that guy. Just always dart, darts out the last yeah, possible Billy. second. Yeah, fucking. Yeah, Billy the snow hair. Fuck Billy. <laughs> Fuck Billy. Um, but I'm specifically looking for a an elk. Okay. And so that is what I'm tracking in the hopes of felling an elk. Make a survival check. Plus uh, thirty-two million. <laughs> Plus fourteen. Um. Yeah, if you roll a natural 20, that'll be among the highest rolls we've ever had no. at the table. I rolled a 2, so I'm actually going to twist it. Do okay. it. Natural 20. Oh! oh. So wow! I had that smell yeah. in my brain. Well, 34. Way to go. I feel like it would have been that, but I hit my twig box, and so it landed mm -hmm. on 2. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, a 34 to find a uh, you find really nice uh, elk or stag. biome appropriate elk, um, a caribou uh, that would normally be in the woods like this, and um, you are able to fell it uh, cleanly and with your great skills, um, with as little violence and pain as possible for the animal. And you are able to clean and do whatever you like with the meat and uh, additional accoutrement of a beast of that size. Perfect. Thank you. My pleasure. So it's New Year's morning. And uh, Queenie, you have actually, would would you say that you would have arrived by uh, the morning of? Just spending yeah, the two morning days? of. Yeah, I would have come in and I would have had a, um, a, my bees would be carrying a, basically the hide of the elk or caribou or whatever, filled with all the things I've been working on, so no one can see what's in there, but it's, they're just carrying along behind me, like Santa's sack, because I just killed Rudolph, apparently. Do you all... <laughs> Rudolph the Red in the car. You all find yourselves in a dining area, um, sharing it with some of the um, silent humans and uh, ogres alike. Um, it's amazing how quickly these... Uh, 
groups have united in the face of true survival, given given what horrors have happened in the last few days. And there you sit. There you sit. What happens next is up to you. Do we feel, as a group, that there is a particular time for gift giving? Do we feel? I mean, like, what have we learned from your near passing on traditions to the ogres, and the ogres passing traditions on to us? Do we? You feel like um, there is going to be a uh, evening feast, maybe like at the feast. That there's the... going to be an evening carnival of okay. sorts. That there's going to be an evening uh, a- event. Uh, that everything seems to be um, gearing towards when the sun sets, okay. and that when that happens, that is the time to open presents and gift one another. That is the time to uh, play games. That is the time to wait for midnight. Uh, uh, there is there's no such thing as clock in this reality. Sure, uh, the gnomish invention may exist, perhaps, but uh, not in this space. Certainly. I would say that this is all extremely new and foreign to Scrim and he's like doing what he does best in that he's like making up as he goes and like just trying to fit in and like look like he knows what he's doing right having uh, spent the last three days doing whatever he's doing to gather the things that he needs you do that and now you're all sitting and having uh, Annie Ann's breakfast uh, cinnamon uh, cinnabuns hmm I think it was monkey bread <laughs> Oh, my apologies. Oh, we're eating your monkey bread. Why well, you save this for holidays. <sighs> oh, why don't you make this more often? This is delicious. Oh, this is very rich. <laughs> oh, it sure is. <laughs> there will be a feast later, so do not fill up. Oh, but it's so good. Man stops, stomps in and grabs quite a bit of the monkey bread. All day feast. All day feast. I like the sound of that. Mm. The, uh, the ogres have agreed we will eat for 24 hours. That seems right. Starting tonight until the following night. Agreed. There are no objections from Scrim. When would you like to conduct the blood sacrifice? <laughs> the blood sacrifice, you say? If you would like to offer a beast... To is this required by one of the three? It is how at least some parts of my homeland... How much blood what must we produce? The blood of one animal is enough. One animal? Not of... Not of Human or ogre. No no human blood, no ogre blood. Ah. Hey, hey, can you throw goblin in there, please? Come yeah, on. And dragon. Or goblin, or dragonborn, or triton, mm. or rabbit folk, or fear. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, a pig, a good? Pig is <sighs> ideal for today, the last day of the year. Ah. From where I'm from, there are certain villages and tribes that have a festival called Sain Mane and on this day they, they conduct a bloat which is blood sacrifice mm. and feast and a pig, a swine is traditional for this purpose. Again, this is from my own home. If you'd like to experience it or should we save the play for before or after the blood sacrifice if this is up to the high priest of the mm. uh, new order I will think on it it's a good bread <laughs> it's a little trick oh I don't share that recipe with anyone it's a family secret mm. do you have a swine worth at least 25 gold pieces that's a shed load of gold for a swine, you want to hear? That's gotta be some pig! <laughs> the finest pig you have. We will find the finest pig we have. When you are ready, summon me. I must go. 
jumps forward and trod, <laughs> trod, trods off out into the hallway. Uh, clearly, uh, that is his day's mission. And you find yourselves all alone once again. I can't believe that the costume survived the explosion. Thank goodness that we brought it back to the villa. <laughs> well, all the costumes survived. Well, all the costumes that we brought that we brought back and changed in. Oh, we took them from the theater. Yeah. And uh, we returned here after the terrible revelation with the uh, brain eaters. Yeah. And then, so the seven voyages of Admiral Trothak the Shark Punchers. What do you think? This will be a tradition. Well, it's good to see you guys. It's been three days. I, I, oh, I, I, are you all right? I mean, you were, you were just like, God. Oh, yeah, I was out in the woods just working on stuff. When do we do presents? After the blood sacrifice. All oh, all sleep. right. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know. Or, or perhaps later. I, I actually do not know. Well, you're the one that told us we did presents. I did. Yeah. Oh, I guess I did, didn't I? There's, yes, a, lot of, there's, like, there's a lot of peer pressure going on here, Yornia. If you made up the thing about the presents, I'm not going to be happy with you. I've spent three days in the wilderness working on the presents for you guys. No, no, I mean, uh, to... Do I have to wrap them up? We must uh, share gifts... Yeah, presents. ...amongst... Uh, to, to exhibit fellowship on the final day of the year. Okay. Mm. All right. I and totally that's today. That. <laughs> yes, that is today. All right. Day's I just want to make sure I didn't miss it. Oh, do you? I rolled really high my survival to get back here on time. <laughs> oh, you made it just in time for monkey bread. Oh, I can't eat that. Why? I have a gluten intolerance. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Queenie, you prefer to eat fresh. <laughs> oh, not the way I make a blood up. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> very deep. Boy, you're eating a 12 inch sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this isn't made from bread. This is made from a sandwich. Oh. Mm hmm. That makes sense. Uh, so I would basically work with the, you know, the the humans and the ogres that would want to, who would have volunteered to be in like a play and carnival and basically helping, you know, pass out costumes for people who want to celebrate, um, celebrate the new year in such a way. Are I would. You, sorry, God. No, you go. Ahead. No, I, I was uh, to pass the day uh, again because you know Scrim's not doing any work. Uh, over the last <laughs> three days or, or so, uh, I am not as gone as Queenie is. Not even close. He would have been coming and going, but Scrim would have been more quiet than usual as well. Kind of like lost in thought while while going amongst uh, you know going about the things that he's doing. Sure, um, and that includes today again avoiding work. Uh, enjoying the treats that Barnabas might be preparing to make, uh, you know, picking at food, but but not not talking as much as normal. I, I mean, honestly, during times of real survival like you have been experienced with this group, this is sort of like the first time where you've had a chance for privacy. This is it for any of you. I, I would say all of you have spent less time together over the course of these three days than you have for the last nine months almost, right? And Same. so uh, you being quiet, you, you don't get any pressure or curiosity from certainly the folks who wouldn't call you necessarily friend but hero. And when you do get a chance to interact with uh, the rest of your found family, you... Talk briefly. You, you you talk shortly, and it's that's a and, nod. And, but it, but but you're also getting a little bit of that same from from the rest of the group. Everyone seems to sort of be healing, not just in their physical bodies, but in their spirits and in their souls, just just as you are. Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist! <laughs> oh, I don't know. We are the 
day of New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we're we at the breakfast. breakfast, but I honestly I think we should just fast forward to <sighs> evening, right? Well, yeah. it's kept been this whole time. Who? Well, uh, Yorni, are you asked really ask that. specifically? And yeah. uh, nobody seems to know where Ket is. Uh, those of you who've been wandering around have seen him occasionally, um, but he hasn't been particularly. He's eaten. So to clarify, he didn't just vanish off into the mountains. He is he descended with us. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. He was with us. He was well, with I'm you. He was man. he was with you when you first uh, reunited. Junior, shut the fuck up. Ball scream. Cat Rustin was with you when you crashed. Mm. Yeah. He was driving, certainly piloting the escape vessel. No, uh, I was there. Yes, exactly right. Uh, you made your way down the side of the mountain. You were able to make your way to the uh, tree line. Uh, four or five miles away from the center of destruction. And uh, he was there with you uh, as you met, uh, reunited with Daisy and with the rest of the humans, with the ogres. And you had your whole conversation. They saw, uh, 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 and had an experience of seeing ogre spirits rising out into the sky, mm. which they called ogre heaven. Um, the few interactions that you've had with Ket over the last three days have been sour. Uh, not not uh, violent, certainly. Not uh, just, just pensive <clears throat> into himself. He has been spending his time uh, training, perhaps. Occasionally uh, uh, doing physical exercises with his sword. Um, relishing in that but mostly just been sitting, pondering, uh, uh, very much into himself. Uh, attempts t- uh, to talk to him have been brief, abrupt. Uh, he's in a very bah humbug mood to put a Scrooge on it. But that is not the here and now. Right now, you are all enjoying a breakfast. Oh, that's what he was doing. <laughs> so I still had a, a costume made for him. Who will, who else will perform in this play? <laughs> Not me. Well, there are a couple of people who were interested in sharing the stories of the seven voyages of Trothak the Shark Puncher. Is this something you made up? Well, we had a little bit of time. <laughs> when I spin a yarn, I get a little out of hand, I admit. It's a yes or no question, Bonobos. You know, I mean, you don't have to like, you know, it's not open ended. Yes or no? Should you make it up? Of course, there's no such thing as Trothak the Shark Puncher. Uh, it's fictional. And you wrote parts for everyone. Well, we were the, we were all of those who wanted to perform. Well, there, you don't have to in a carnival. You don't have to perform in order to wear a costume. Well, I just mean it's one thing to spin a tale. It's another thing to write out parts and dialogue and. Dress. It's more like general guidance, and it's more of an improvisational tale. So we'll see how they do. Uh, well, it still sounds pretty cool. Would you want to perform that? Or I think I still have five scripts of that original <laughs> play we were talking about. And Yornir does pull out <laughs> one Yornir. of these manuscripts. Yornir, uh, Yornir. Yornir. No, no, it's a nice thing, but you know the time's passed. We're never going to do it. Never going to do it. Never. I, there's never time. I get the time. I time. forgot that there was. I forgot that there was that script. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. I got so into the head cannon of Trothak the Shark Puncher. I mean, are, are all your costumes still here in the villa? I, you know, I, I found a bunch of costumes. But I can't remember whose was whose. I just don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible. There was a moment we had it. We captured it. We lost it. I still have my costume. Is all I'm going this to say. This is definitely the garb of Shagoth of the Black Rock. I'm not opposed. We have the scripts. <laughs> Look, it's a new year. No, was... I really didn't want to do any work. And now you're all suggesting I have to do work? Are you kidding me? Oh, I don't think that spinning a yarn with your friends is work. Who would get paid for telling stories with their friends? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly no one. <laughs> well, not as a full-time job. <laughs> that's, 
That's inconceivable, and also, quite frankly, ridiculous. Oh, it's uh, embarrassing, eh? Can you imagine being such an idiot to think that that would ever, ever be a real thing when all of us have to work real jobs? Unbelievable. The audacity of some people. People! Unbelievable audacity. Smash cut. It's uh, <laughs> mid afternoon, and you are all ready to prepare uh, to, to the, the entire uh, uh, audience of ogres. Some some sixty plus ogres and some two hundred plus humans are all out there, ready to go. And I will grab the script. <laughs> no, let's fucking this go! Is, oh shit! Are Scrimden, we actually gonna do this? Scrim didn't sign up for this bullshit. It needs to be canon. Uh, I still have my my full costume, exactly what I was wearing. I kept everything. Mine would have been a bunch of shitty bones and shit. <laughs> so Scrim probably has. Oh, yeah, this oh isn't stapled or anything. Is this, no, just make sure that they're. Oh, is there an amount of pages? Do we need to share? Uh, there should be enough, but if not, uh, you're you're doing that. Well, you want to share? Extra. We're we actually going to do share. this. How, how many pages are in the oh, okay. play? Just kidding. Okay. Right. Uh, it looks like three. I got oh, three okay. pages. I have yeah, three. I have three. I have three. But I'm not looking to see what's what. Me, I'm not pre-reading anything. So. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna underline. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, underline uh, my. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that'd be a good call. Uh, can you pass me a pen? Or the? Can you pass me the Batman bucket, Mike? Yeah. You all find yourselves behind a very quickly makeshift stage. And you are staring at uh, the script that Yornir somehow found and produced and was interested in running for some reason. <laughs> and uh, what you've discovered is that... How much did he pay you to, to, to set this up? Uh, a huge amount. A huge, I mean, he quit his job. I, I paid him a shit oh, and, oh, that one could have gone your medical bills. Unbelievable. Uh, I mean, this is why he has the medical bills. It's fine. I'll just skip uh, those. This, this, this. Uh, anyway, um, you have had one problem prior to performing this. And the problem was that there was no one to read the other parts. Yes, there were five parts written the by the uh, the now deceased author of this play, Seneca Grutenica. That's right. But you are uh, looking at it and realizing that there, there, there. Who, who plays Sophlet? Who plays some of these other parts? There's only one other person who can, is capable of the job. And that's Ket Rusty. Oh, Jesus. Let's fucking go. Yeah, you're, you're gonna regret that, my friend. <laughs> and oh, all you knew he would come around to it. All you can ask him every after day. After much coercing, you are able to convince him to contribute after days of silence and perhaps mourning mm-hmm. and contemplation. And the curtains are pulled apart not as grand there are no there, there there's very little music there's 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 no leap motifs there's no musical uh, orchestra at the front you're not you're not performing in an opera but there's something weirdly more important about this performance there's a gravity to this experience that is right for the celebration and you hear the sound of cat The stage is set in a grand hall with Sophilus, uh, the god of the ogres, seated on a throne of marble and silver. Uh, the five ogre demigods, uh, Jotna Frosca. <laughs> y- Jotna. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Jotna Frosca. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Trozak, uh, the shock puncher, Fiona Smashmouth, <laughs> Shagoth of the Black Rock, and Mr. Bones. <laughs> Stand before Sophilus, <laughs> ready to pledge their allegiance. Oh, is this too soon? <clears throat> Sophilus. Uh, speak now, my uh, loyal ogre demigods. Uh, what news bringeth you to me this day? Great Sophilus, we come to offer our fealty and to seek your wisdom. We humbly request your guidance, just as Trothak the Shark Puncher, on his first great voyage, sought the guidance you're, you're of the map the in the halls of the Merlin King. Oh, no mighty time. god this of the ogres. This is not the script. What are you saying? It's not on the script. I didn't come up with all seven voyages not to use them. <laughs> 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 I'm doing it. Fine, I'm fine. 
<laughs> Is it going to be more of an improv <clears throat> thing? Or? You, you got to end with the last line, though, or I can't start my... Oh, mighty god of the ogres. A great facsimile to the great Merlin King. <laughs> I don't know where to come in if you don't keep... If you don't end the way you're supposed to on the script. We desire... No, he has to say, oh, my ogres. God, of the ogre. Oh, thanks. <laughs> we desire to serve you and your people, Sophilith. <clears throat> we are your humble servants, <laughs> ready to fulfill your every command. <clears throat> <clears throat> and Scrim takes off his hat. <laughs> we beg of your mercy, Sophilith, and we beg to be favored with your divine counsel. <laughs> Ket stands and approaches all of you. My loyal subjects, I am pleased with your devotion. I have a great task for you, a quest of <clears throat> utmost importance. I like, look around reading this next line. <laughs> I like bow. We are ready to serve, Sophilet. What is your command? You must journey to the great city of Ogerton and import the o- to th- and impart sorry impart to the ogres the, my teachings of education and commerce and military art and religion. Aye, aye, Captain. We will not fail you, <laughs> Sophilith. We will make sure that the ogres of Ogerton receive your teachings, just as Admiral Trothak the Shark Puncher received the Eldritch Story wisdom in the voyage of the Eye of the Bleeding Star. <laughs> and we will ensure that they are well versed in all aspects of ogre society. <clears throat> the second voyage. <laughs> Second voyage. Second voyage. <laughs> Your next. Oh, uh, we truly we live in a society. <laughs> <laughs> truly we live in a society. Oh my god! Why do they keep putting my lines after Barnabas? <laughs> <laughs> this is a great honor. What? <clears throat> this is a line. Great, this is a great honor. This is a great. Oh, I found honor. it! I found it! <laughs> <clears throat> this is a great honor, Sophilith. We will carry out your will with pride and ensure that the ogres of Ogerton are well educated and well rounded. Uh, all of the ogres die laughing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you say that they all of the ogres of Ogerton are well rounded, they explode in laughter, and all of the humans looking around are like. Scrim is shocked. He is like visibly shocked that this is funny. What? I mean, easy crowd tonight, right? We will serve you and your people with all of our hearts, Sophilith. We will make sure that the ogres of honor are knowledgeable in the ways of commerce, military strategy, and the arts. And. <laughs> And education and religion too. Let us depart at once, Sophilith. <laughs> we are eager to begin this quest and impart the teachings of our people to the ogres of Ogerton. Very well. <laughs> My ogre demigods, uh, go forth and spread the knowledge and the wisdom of our people, but know this. Your forms will be changed by your journey to the mortal plane. May the blessings of me be with you on this journey. The ogre demigods bow to Sophilith and exit the stage, ready to embark on their uh, quest to convey his teachings to the people of the city of Ogerton and the Curtain Falls. Oh, you just pulled on that rope over there. That one? No, that one. You gotta do it at the same time. You gotta, no. I'll, yeah. right, I'll reach out and I'll grab it. I'll pull it. Shut up, shut up. Act two, scene two. Three. Scene three, my apologies. Three. <laughs> the stage is set in a large hall in the great city of Ogerton. The five ogre demigods, Jotnar Thrasgard, Trothak the Shark Puncher, uh, uh, Fiona Smashmouth, Smashmouth uh, Shagoth of the Black Rock, and Mr. Bones stand before a group of ogres attempting to impart their teachings. 
<coughs> cough and, and cough and throat clear. <coughs> Greetings, ogres of Ogreton. We have been sent by Sophilith, the god of the ogres, to convey the teachings of our people to you. First, we will speak of the importance of education. Just, this is the most important voyage, the second voyage, the Eye of the Bleeding Star, becoming educated. Learning on that voyage, the great Admiral Trothak the Shark Puncher understood that starry wisdom. And it is crucial <laughs> that all ogres learn and grow, just as Admiral Trothak the Shark Puncher did on his grand voyages. <laughs> So that may, we may be strong and wise. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, don't mind the wrong spot. No, the nodding was correct. Oh, okay. It might be a coincidence. Oh, you started to say my line. My line starts with yes. No, oh, yeah. Oh, you, you, you go now. You go yeah. now. Oi. Oh, okay. Yes. Education is key to our success as a people. It allows us to understand the world around us and make informed decisions. But some of the ogres in the audience are not paying attention. <laughs> they are too busy chatting and laughing amongst themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just the first topic. It looks like we have our work. I repeat, <laughs> our work cut out for us. Oh, <laughs> <God. sighs> ogres! Mm. Yeah, yes, I'm speaking directly to you, you the audience. You hear the sound of the audience, croon. <laughs> Sprint, get up, please. Ow, ow, I don't see ow, that in the Sorry, screen. you're on your side. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Oh, ogres, please pay attention. This is important information that Sophilet has tasked us with imparting to you. But full out of character disclosure, Sophilet was a fraud and doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is more of a parody. We're mocking the religion of the old government system. <laughs> ah, all right, all right. Moving on to the next topic. Commerce is essential to the prosperity of our society. Just as the great prosperity that Admiral Trothak the Shark Puncher gained on his third voyage in the voyage of the idol of the three-headed monkey. Poor Queenie. <laughs> it allows us to trade and exchange goods, such as all of those gold in that simian statue, as well as resources, and helps us to thrive. Our ships filled with treasure. <laughs> But, what? but some of the ogres. What? It's your mother. But it's some your of life. the ogres. Yes. But some Education is key to our success. No, 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 no. 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 But some of the ogres in the audience. Which, which, where are we at? It's, but it's this one. Come on. circled. But he hasn't done this one. No, he's also doing the journeys in between. I'll read his line too. You have to no. agree All right, just... moving on to the next topic. <laughs> Commerce is essential to the prosperity of our society. Oy. It allows us to trade and exchange goods and resources. It helps true. us to thrive. Like the idol of the three-headed monkey. <laughs> and I, Queenie, agree with that. Okay. But some of the ogres in the audience are still not paying attention. They're nodding off. <laughs> oh, imagine how much a three-headed monkey can nod. <laughs> I didn't we've, see that. We've actually seen this in the script. <laughs> this is unacceptable! <laughs> we must all pay attention and listen to the teachings of our people! Ah, maybe, maybe if we sing the teachings, the ogres will pay more attention. Dancing queen, young and sweet, only 17. Did you say dancing queen? Ooh, dancing queen. What are you doing? What are you doing? 17. Yes. 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 
This is not in the script. What are you saying? Why are you, you singing are you this? What are you talking about? about singing. We're only rated M. We're not rated X. <laughs> Say the DJ. Say the DJ. Scream. Scream, I don't think that this is working. I'm trying to become a star. Oh, hold on. Let me, oh, I'm not sure that will work, Mr. Bones. Oh. Oi, all we the same. We must persevere. We all the same, Jotnar of the Frost Guard, we must persevere. <laughs> Just as Admiral <laughs> Trothak, the Shark Puncher, persevered yes. in his fourth voyage, <laughs> the voyage of the Ghost of the Navigator, <laughs> persevering amongst the souls of drowned sailors, leering oh, from the rocks. Lost. And we, I did not get lost. The Admiral Trothak Shark Puncher could never get lost. Oh, that is ridiculous. This goes on for perhaps another hour as you complete the uh, uh, act of uh, the act two and you arrive at act three, scene two. The stage is set in an open square in the great city of Ogaton, the five ogre demigods, Jotna Frostgard, Trothak the Shark Puncher, Fiona Smashmouth, Shagoth of the Black Rock, and Mr. Bones stands before a large <laughs> crowd of ogres. <laughs> Softly, he said that. The god of the ogres is also present. Sophilus, that's me. Ogres of Ogaton, it is time for the lottery. One of you will be chosen to return to Ogre Heaven to live out the remainder of your days in eternal bliss and wisdom. Oh, this is a little bit grim now that I'm reading it again. <laughs> Has anyone else noticed that we always speak in the exact same order? I'm time? really frustrated with whoever wrote this script. <laughs> None of this is in the script. Get back on script! Excitedly, this is your a great honor, Sophilet. Who will be chosen? Yes, I, I, I say true. Who among us will be blessed <laughs> as Admiral <laughs> Trothak, the shark puncher, was blessed on his fifth voyage, the voyage of the rumbling of the wake, quaking reef, <laughs> blessed by the spirits of reef and sea foam and rumbling crush whole kingdoms of sand. Uh, what? <laughs> And be blessed with his gift. <laughs> He's been doing that for an hour. <laughs> Your eager queenie. Yes, yeah. education is key to our success <laughs> as no, a people. No, no, no. Skip it. I can't, I can't get wait, wait to can't see it. I can't see it. That was 90 oh. minutes ago. <laughs> I can't wait to see who it will be. <clears throat> It is a great honor to be chosen by Sophila. May the wisest and smartest ogre be blessed with this gift. Ah, uh, come on, Sophila. <laughs> Let's get with the show on the road. Who's going to ogre heaven? Did I not interpret that right? <laughs> Do you know what impatiently means? I don't think you know what impatiently means. I, mis I misread it. Keep going, keep going. Uh, Sophilus holds up a large glass jar filled with slips of paper. Each of you has written your name on a slip of paper and placed it in the jar. I will now select the best, the ogre, who will return with me to ogre heaven. Sophilus reaches into the jar and pulls out a slip of paper. He holds it up for all to see. The lucky ogre who will return to ogre heaven is... Grandarius the Great. The crowd of ogres cheers. This is exciting. And Grandarius the Great steps forward, a look of amazement on his face. And this is played by like a five-year-old ogre child. <laughs> Grandarius, no! yeah, a five-year-old ogre runs up. <laughs> Thank you, Sophilip. I'm honored to be chosen by no. you. Nicely done, lad. You have faithfully, uh, faithfully adhered to my teachings, Grandarius, and expanded our understanding of the mortal world. You are a credit to our people. Go now and live in eternal bliss and wisdom in ogre heaven. 
Grandarius the Great bows to Sophonis and the five demigods and then exits the stage and then the curtain falls. Uh. <clears throat> <clears throat> Act four, scene five. Ogerton, a grand hall. The stage is set in a grand hall in the great city of Ogerton. The five ogre demigods sit around in a large around a large table piled high with delicious human dishes. Human dishes? That have been prepared and cooked in a variety of elaborate gourmet ways? I think it's dishes made by him. Audience, it's dishes made by humans, not made of humans. Yes, yes, this is uh, this is the case. It seems to be a typo on the script. It's just human human dishes, as in made by the humans. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. I got you, Kit. At least you're sticking to the script. Hold on one second. We are on stage. You can't just hold, <laughs> hold on. on. Hold on. The, the the are you here? I thought we had to be off script. I thought we had to be off script. The rest now. of you are improv I'm allowed to do something. You're still holding your script? I thought we were off the book. What are we doing? A toast to the success of our quest and our gods, Odin, Anum, and Recall. <laughs> What? Oh my god, he's gone. He's gone crazy. <laughs> we have successfully conveyed the wise teachings of Odin, Anna, and Drakkar, <laughs> just as my crew was taught the great teachings and the importance of a strong harpoon arm in my sixth voyage, Smile of the Shrouded Leviathan. <laughs> <laughs> And so, Admiral Trothak, the shark puncher, has taught his crew, we will pass on the teachings of these three gods to the ogres of Ogre Town. <laughs> ogres of Ogre Town. Oh, okay. Bubble view. This is a great honor, Sophilith. We will carry out your will with pride and ensure that the ogres of Ogreton are well educated and well rounded. You've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's like she's four fun. pages behind well, always. No, this, on this one right here, it says we will have to work like this. We will just make sure. This no, one. no, we will make sure that the ogres of Ogreton is Oi, right there. No, and we are about to enjoy to the ogres of Ogreton. Queenie, take so a I'm, large I'm, bite I'm, of roast like that. Oh, oh, right there, right there. And? Hey, I can start it now that I know where I'm at. Weave. Stop it. <laughs> you knock it off. Now I'm going to take another large bite. And I got oil all over this thing. <laughs> God damn it. And we've enjoyed a feast fit for demigods along the way. I got sandwich all over my script. <laughs> Going the Renaissance beer and having a nap. Oh my god, two degrees. <laughs> oh, and why is there mac and cheese at the Ren <laughs> Fair? Oh, no! <laughs> we have faced many challenges and hardships together, <laughs> but we have learned to work as a team and become friends. And this has been one heck of a journey. I, I think we make a pretty good team. Maybe we should consider going on another quest together. Aye, another quest? <laughs> Admiral Trothak the Shark Puncher never turns down another quest. <laughs> Just like I did it in my seventh voyage, the Anthem of the Emerald Sunset. <laughs> what do you have in mind exactly? As I raise my eyebrows suspiciously. There. <coughs> excitedly. There. There. Excitedly. There. there are always a new As we sail towards the, the green flash, after where unknowing if are. we would meet Davy Had Jones himself it. or the fiddler on his green. You're not helping. But we would knew that either way we would face our fate on the seas like true ogres. She's so oh, confused. A toast to the success of her quest. Yes, we have successfully conveyed his wise teachings no, to the there, ogres. No, there are always new challenges. Where? Down. Where down? Down here. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Queen, they look after the me. One. There. He means this one. Yeah, but get excited. I can't because he hasn't no, said his line yet. No, you have to get yet. excited. I can't until he says. he did. No, he did Can say you it. say it though? Another quest.
quest? What did you I, find? what did you have in mind? Another. Just like the mind was opened on my eighth Another five. quest! Another quest! What did you have in mind? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, check out of the, the black rock. There are always new challenges to face and new adventures to be had. No, oh, I'm lost. <laughs> You're right here. You got it. Yeah. See, I said, I said my line properly. And so you can go into oh, this one. Perfect. But you perfect. have to be thoughtful about it because it says so right there in them parentheses. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I agree! There is always more to learn and more to accomplish. What? What, what does that say? You gotta pump your fist. Pumps his fist. Well, if yeah. you say so. Let's do it! <laughs> I'm always ready for the next adventure! I don't, I don't think that's what they meant, Bob. No, I think that is what they meant. <laughs> I don't think that's exactly what they meant. It looks like he's pumping something else. <laughs> ah, the next adventure! <laughs> I said the next adventure. Scream! I'm making some updates to the script. Yes! <laughs> no, the script is over. Please, I'm, I'm getting please. tired. Please, the next adventure. I need, I need you, the, the, the next line is yours. You oh, this reminds me of my ninth voyage. I You've said been, the next adventure. <laughs> You've only been doing that for thirty seconds. I'm, I'm tired, guys. <laughs> shut your damn mouth. You've had, three, you've had three days to rest. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what I've been doing. You don't know. He's been unusually quiet for the last three days. Don't turn the UV light on in Scrim's cabin. So is it my, is it, there are always new challenges no, to face. we're done, I new, think. We're new done. adventures no, to be had. Yeah, no. no. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you're the one. You're the one. You're the one. God, run on the stage face. to play with the lights. Oh, you want to use my like, forearm? Hurts. It's tired. I'm getting tired. <laughs> hold on one he's, second. Uh, he's, <laughs> hold on one second. He's with the production crew. <laughs> I said the next adventure. Hold on one second. The next adventure. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, I don't know what he's doing. He's going <laughs> behind the curtain. I'm dehydrated. You're <laughs> here. Keep damping. Oh, no, I can only vamp damping. so long. <laughs> the next. God, we can't even move around this. T- my my shoes are glued. Oh, it's to like the- sandpaper on why? my dick. It reminds me of why you need to eat your bananas for potassium. Just <laughs> oh, just as we learned in the I'm, voyage, I'm the bleeding. Final voyage, the voyage, the voyage of scurvy days. I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. So is it over now? Now do we close? No, we don't. Oh, yes, this is the last line. We don't know oh. what's happening. The old pumps is the worst state direction of all time. Well, you're near supposed to uh, smirk. Oh, I'm going to surprise. say it in one second. Just, <laughs> one he's been saying he's going to say it in one second. Oh, oh, please, 20 minutes. Don't you please. He won't we're come back on stage. <laughs> <coughs> When we when I say this line, we all have to laugh. Okay. But it doesn't say that on the script. No, but it doesn't do, say that on the script. Why do we have? No, it does. It says. Oh, it does. Oh, the other guy does. It didn't change at all. It all says. Okay. I will. I will okay. read it when we are ready. Okay. Do you want to hold on? Do you want to do your line first so that we can? Yeah. Well, no. We just set it up. Set it up. Set it up. Or actually, let's start with mine. There are always new. Cha- I'm doing this excitedly. There are always new challenges to face and new adventures to be had. I agree. There's always more to learn. More to accomplish. Let's let's do this. I'm ready for the next adventure. It uh, looks like we have a sequel on our hands. Uh, Uh, also the land. Uh, this is the crowd. The curtain falls, and and now please. Do we take a bow now? I I think I think yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how. Thank to... you. 
Yeah, I... When the curtains closed in front of us. Never forget <laughs> the voyages of Admiral Trothak oh, the Shark Puncher. This is just what you do. Oh, God, it hurts. I'm mixed up. Yeah. I'm so glad I had the idea for the carnival. <laughs> uh, well, well done, Rich. Well done, well done gang. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That was certainly something. Uh, you all <clears throat> conclude the... We're going to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> You all uh, are breathless uh, as the oh, curtains cl- uh, close. Uh, the um, six of you are are standing behind the curtain, uh, having completed what was an extremely lengthy play. Uh, there were so many additional characters, all of which had to be portrayed by initially the very hesitant and grumpy Ket Rostin, and ultimately by the end, he's standing there now and sort of looking at all of you like, this was, this was kind of fun. This was, this was not too bad, I think. Oh, it feels good to laugh at evil, doesn't it? I admit I have uh, been a bit pensive over the last few days since our experience together. I am happy to be free, but this was good for the soul, I think. Yes, I agree. I, I too was worried about uh, performing. I'd, I'd never done in such a crowd before, but <laughs> once Scrim had given me those notes on how to project, I, I knew that I would be okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did well. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know you were such a good actor. Well, I, I had to ask what projecting meant, and he said, just scream the lines, and that just I made could, sense. I was standing right next to you, but I could hear you really well. I, I really tried to put a bit of myself into it. And you know what I really appreciated about you? What? You read the script the way it was written. Well. I always knew where you were at. I just I didn't want to get lost. Hi, when you're telling a story, you need to put your whole heart and soul into it, Mr. Fire Blossom, and you did don't, just that. Don't take it past your long Ah, right, well done, everyone. <laughs> Are you being passive aggressive about my slight changes to the script? Oh, I'm not being passive about it at all. It was incredibly distracting. We were out there, the lights were on us. I was scared. I was shaking. You do not think it was more humorous the way that I changed it? <laughs> all you did was add in three gods. And what's humorous about a, that? A sound effect at the end. What, what sound effect did you add? The, the, the song that we all laughed over. You added a song to Well, I end? spoke to the composer down in the orchestra. <laughs> oh, I couldn't, I couldn't hear anything because we were all, the script said to laugh. So I, I, I well, frankly, I, I, I am shocked that we were able to find a full orchestra uh, for this carnival. It was, three, it was three ogres who could barely play. <laughs> yeah, Look at Rusty Trumpet. This is why it took so long. Your near had to go and talk to them and 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 and, and consult and then yeah, eventually came yeah. back on stage. But I was wondering what had taken so long. I thought Scrim was going to succumb to blood loss. <laughs> ah, yeah, I'm a little sore, but you know what they say: we suffer for our art. It was worth it. What did you got? Everybody did great. <laughs> Everyone did. Oh, you did great, Mr. Stavascotch. I just don't really understand the stage instructions, but I, I did the best that I could. It yeah, sounds Scrim, good. I think we need to have a talk. Scrim, oh, you're no. bleeding. I know. Your nails have dug into your palm. Yeah, well, well, you know. Uh, oh, oh. You know, good thing oh, I make wore. Make sure that doesn't get infected. <laughs> it's a good thing I wore my red pants. That's all I can say. Why well, do you, you even have tell. red pants? Well, I, red's my favorite color. Scrim, can I ask you a question? Uh, of course, Queenie. Do you know what impatiently means? <laughs> Patiently? Uh, yeah, I, I know what that means. <laughs> why, why do you ask? Do you always rub your nipples when you're impatient? <laughs> oh! In, 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 impatiently. Did you think it meant impregnant? Uh, 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 impregnant. Impregnant. <laughs> <laughs> 
pregnant. <laughs> Wait, give me a minute. <laughs> All right, did you need? Do you need a healing? <laughs> Impatiently. Yeah, no, no. Queenie's right. I see it now. I see it now. Do you have chafing uh, on your chest? Or? Chafing doesn't even begin to describe it, Jordan. Well, 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 then I smack Scrim on the back. <laughs> please, please don't touch me. No one touch me. No one. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm glad. That, I'm glad that you know, for such a last-minute change of plans, that you know, you all brought a great level of enthusiasm. You made the fake uh, ogre demigods that we created. You know, and, uh, we gave them a proper s- uh, send-off. I might yeah. say. I wish we had never done that. <sighs> I uh, think I wish the same. It's, you did really well. I did uh, just read the words and the orders they were presented to me on the page. I just think I like your voice a lot. Oh, thank you. It was very pleasant to listen to you speak. Well, I, uh, is this is this what you do when you are not me? Is this what uh, these people you do when you're not uh, uh, attempting to defeat evils and, and this sort well, of yeah, thing? This kind of stuff, sure. So you're not you're Scrim not. Scrim likes to fish and drink at this, the same time. This sort of uh, carnival is a special occasion when you have a bunch of people where morale is low, supplies are limited. And death is very likely in the coming winter. Uh, it's nice to have a little bit of joy at the end of the year. Uh, it's a very special occasion that should only be done once. I think I have some experience with the threat of death and with uh, 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 danger around every corner. But it, it's not been plays and dramatics and, and theater that has, has rescued us. It has been focus. And 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 working on our, our, our physical and 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 mind. This is not. This is not what we are doing now. This is, this is play. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't mean to interrupt. You need to have a minute. Like a minute over there. Uh, a minute over there. Over where? Over there. Over there. Please come with me. All right. All right. Okay. Go on in. Yes. Go on in. Okay. I need help. Help with what? Swollen and raw, I need you to touch and heal it. <laughs> swollen. Touch and heal blood. No, no, I mean, like, really swollen. What, what, what I need you to tell the me. The part that I was pumping, my fist it was in the direction I was just trying to follow the play. Please, your please, fist is healing swollen? touch. Just heal it, just touch it, heal it. That's what you do. Touch your fist? I've seen, no, 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 not my fist. Where the fist was between my legs, please. It's swollen. <laughs> touch it and heal it. Please. Oh, you only please. I need it. <laughs> Did I hear that you need somebody to touch your swollen parts ah, to heal them? No, you only farther away. No, come I, on, I was down the queen's ears. Like, you only farther. I need you to tell. I need you to. I need you to tell me it's what's wrong. Penis. Penis. Why did you say so? <laughs> 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 it's like I see hot without the hot. <laughs> Are you feeling bad? Though? You ever ice your nuts? <laughs> it's in this moment that uh, Daisy comes back around to the back of the stage, and she she looks at all of you, and she is like. <laughs> It's a living. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never better. Thanks. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That was interesting. Uh, oh, you like your performances, uh, young lady. Oh, I, I, I did a little bit of theater. I've done a little bit of everything, but, you know, there are a lot of these shanty towns at least have a little bit of bread and circus, and I'm happy to perform. And uh, wax philosophical and spin a yarn. The ogres enjoyed it very much. Oh, you yeah, know, all we can do is hope that they understand satire so that the message is misinterpreted. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a starship troopers on our hands. <laughs> 
I'm doing my part. <laughs> Which one? Uh, yeah, uh, no, uh, no. I, I'm not sure what they took away from that, but they were they were laughing and clapping, and and uh, I heard a lot of uh, hail Sophilith and uh, you know, it was Ooh. it was. I, I think that they they may have met, had a, had a bit of a mixed experience. Oh yeah, but, yeah. It's uh, the, everyone else seemed to enjoy it. It's, it was it was fine. I'll take fine. We did fine, lads. It was good. Oh, I'm mirth. Not now. Hmm. Oh, never mind. How? Oh. Um. <clears throat> is uh, is it almost time for the feast? Oh yeah, the blood sacrifice before or after the feast. Whenever Manny decides to, or Manny. I think he's going by Man now. Man. Yeah, he's oh. shortened it since. You call him Manny. I oh yeah, yeah I'll call him, I'll call him Manny too. Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, I was told he would come get me when he's ready, but perhaps we'll skip it if he wants to. He might be confused because you're asking for Manny, and he goes by Man now. <laughs> Oh, you think? I think it's possible, yeah. Maybe it was a misunderstanding. Well, you know, maybe this could be their new tradition. They put on the play every year. How's your swelling, Scrim? Oh, you know, it's unbelievable. I, you know, I thought I thought Bonobos had a gentle touch, but <laughs> Yornia just, I mean, it was instant. It was like it was never even there. I got a spring in my step. I'm ready to go. I'm really happy for He's you. He's a true medicine man, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, think, I think we should take some time to teach you what a fist bump is supposed a to fist look like. Well, I mean, I, I did what it said in the script. It was just one of those things. It was I don't a think odd, you can improve on that technique. I thought maybe the ogres just were, maybe, well, maybe I'm confused. I thought the ogres were confused, but, you well, know, who knows? So what I'll ask is, did it say grab your genitals and pump well, your it fist? Said bump your fist. I mean, now I'll <laughs> Just say, how else do you pump your fist? I mean, you know, I I, like, I don't want to be a little indecent, but like, oh, we've all pumped our fist once or twice. Just cold, cold and lonely out here on the ice. (laughs) (laughs) You say, this this language unit, uh, pump your fist, you just you just do this. What you go, huh? One more time, one more time for me, ah, ha. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You give it a good ahoy! With yeah. that, with that, with, Alas! with that angle and torque, I tear it right off. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's nothing, it's you, nothing you, don't, do. you don't grab your penis yeah, yeah, when you yeah. do it's it. It's nothing, it's it, nothing. Your hand, your fish should be penis free. It doesn't, it, it just pops. It doesn't say anything. It very clearly, it I, doesn't I can say read anything it, about your penis. Pump it, but it says pump. No. Pump is, is pump is back and forth like this. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're holding yourself. <laughs> you know, you know what? Maybe maybe we revisit this. Um, I got a question. Out. Anytime you read the word pump, do you assume that it has to do with your <laughs> Is the orchestra still there? <laughs> yeah. Wait, Ms. Mr. Stamiskosh. When when we were when when we were sent below deck to, to be the build pump, what were you doing? <laughs> what were you doing? This explains so much. I I'm too sick for this session. I, I have to go. <laughs> what do you think builds pumping then? Bonobos, I don't want to talk about it right now. <laughs> Hurry, start playing. You can dance. You can jive. I have to admit, this is this is the most cheerful I have felt in perhaps a year. This is very but funny. There were four men, usually at all times, pumping. Send me out to pump water. You from the bilge. Me. You sent me out to pump water. <laughs> Like, water gets in the bilge and needs to be pumped out because the Moribound was a very shoddy vessel. Oh, well, yeah, it was, it was a shoddy vessel, all right. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't feel so good. <laughs> I don't know if I can make the feast tonight. <laughs> oh. Well, no. may. Oh, and now he's, that that also begs the question: If Mister Stavis got he started a trend of the debt. <laughs> May they rest in peace. 
Let's all make our when way. When I asked you that time <laughs> that Tashi was upset to go pump him up. <laughs> Queen, that was not the time. You told me that's how it was done! It's not the time. You told me this was completely normal! I said we talked and we said we never talked about it. Oh! Tai Shen. Nobody please. look at me! Tai Shen, please. <laughs> now is not the time! Nobody look at me! Now is not the time. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just as confused as you are, Tai Shen. I don't think you're just as confused! <laughs> I think one of us is a little more confused, Scrum! I think one of us is just a little more confused! What do you, what do you want from me, Taisha? It was cold. It was cold. It was cold. Queenie told me to do it. Queenie told me to do it. Just don't look at me. <laughs> well... I think we've learned a valuable lesson today. Uh, what lesson is that? <laughs> well, Don't tell of- Scrim to pump anything. <laughs> I won't. Perhaps we could uh, work on his vocabulary. He did. He thought that impatient was impregnate. <laughs> Just I had something in my eye. <laughs> Then added, added a, a variety of new letters. I'm a consummate professional. How could this have happened? <laughs> All of my years. <clears throat> Maybe you work better at improvised rather than following the script. That could be it, Mr. Stavisgotch. Quite frankly, I'm embarrassed. <clears throat> what were you saying, uh, Daisy? Yeah, Daisy, hi. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I was going to ask if you guys wanted to go and have something to eat. <laughs> that would be Yeah, nice. I think that would be a good yeah, idea. No, uh, I'm so hungry, I can eat a whale. Do we know when we're going to get to give out our presents? I understand that it's, it's as, as, as we eat, this is the first meal of, of something like 18 courses that the ogres have planned. They want to eat a lot. Oh, I think at the end of the night. We save it. We have our feast, we have our sacrifice, and then when everything's winding down really around the fire... don't sacrifice anything. Oh, I, I mean... I know. I just said I don't want to. Well, I think that Mr. Yornier's sacrifice is a, a whole lot more palatable than those dragonborn sacrifices I, to bring spring back. Yeah, I agree. I wasn't okay with that one either. Anyone else feeling really lightheaded? Well, I think it's the, <laughs> the, uh, the consequences of fame. <laughs> Uh, and yeah. the thrilling satisfaction yeah. after a great performance. <laughs> is that? Yeah. Oh, I feel lightheaded. A little dizzy, right? Uh, yeah. After a performance, a stellar, stunning performance yeah. like uh, that. I the big O and half my blood on the floor. I skipped breakfast. <laughs> I didn't have breakfast that Oh, time. you didn't have any of my monkey bread? No. Was your name? No. Oh, maybe I did. I'm gluten intolerant, <laughs> so I had a sandwich. Yeah, it's, it wasn't very clear. <laughs> <laughs> Let us all find a seat and feast in this. You, you like all of the uh, the decorations that we put together? Quite a pinch. Uh, surprisingly, these ogres and humans are are they're they're pretty artistic. I need to hydrate. <laughs> Scream goes and hyd- hydrates. The rest of you all make your way down to a eating uh, uh, square of sorts. Uh, even though it is still snowing um, very, very, very gently and beautifully, uh, you are able to make your way to a central place where uh, there is a tremendous amount of delicious foods to eat. You are uh, able to uh, uh, almost um, buffet style. Uh, find chili with beef and beans, tomatoes and smoky spices, uh, a, a towering salad with mixed greens, root vegetables, crumbled goat cheese, tangy dressing, fresh buttery herb rolls with rosemary, whipped butter, oil for dipping, roast chicken, cranberry glaze, stuffing, pan gravy, charcuterie, cured meats, cheeses, flights of different meads and wines, some of which had been prepared by Tai Shen, uh, cheesecake, with a buttery cracker crust and fruit compote or caramel drizzle, your choice or 
both. You are able to walk down and find yourself at the head of one of the central tables. Everyone is laughing, having enjoyed the play, having enjoyed a uh, carnival of sorts. Uh, it is a social experience and not a soul in dozens of miles in all directions would it seem uh, that uh, uh, is not here in this central square enjoying uh, the festivities a celebration of life and a celebration of being together a celebration to honor the dead and to mourn those who were lost in the uh, last week <clears throat> the Five of you find yourselves there. Ket Rostin is sitting amongst you. Uh, Daisy is there. Man and his entire family all joined at one table uh, with a plate, two plates, three plates packed and stacked high with whatever food assortments attracted you most as you went through and, and experienced everything. Finally, you are resting and sitting there and enjoying this feast. Oh my gosh, you guys see this bread? Grabbed a whole bunch. <laughs> Don't worry, I washed my hands. <laughs> I wasn't gonna ask. Well, I told. We're all on the same page, it's totally fine. Man. Got you each gift. Well, thank you, ma'am. Oh. Is that the food here? No, 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 no. I. Brought you knowledge. And I'm he hands always out, needing knowledge. He hands out uh, wrapped books. You can tell just by holding and feeling them <coughs> and by the spine and, and the way that the paper indents around the edges. It's obviously a book. You know how that goes when it, you get a book mm -hmm. in a present. Did the library of Ogerton survive? No, no. Uh, personal library. From Villa. There's probably a lot of great knowledge that are in those books and all the villas. You might want to start collecting this, but thank you for parting with such valuable wisdom, I'm Last sure. knowledge of Ogerton. Protect. Learn. Important. And you each open your gift. For you, Barnabos. You read the cover. A paring knife. The Fascinating World of Grass, a Comprehensive Guide. <laughs> this book explores the various types of grasses found in Ogerton, including their physical characteristics, habitat requirements, cultural significance. It also includes tips on how to care for grass in your own lawn or garden. <clears throat> I will cherish this always, Manny. I appreciate it. Proud. Thank you. Yes. Oh, I know. Uh, I know a couple of fellas that are in the grass uh, that I used to sail with. I could probably, <laughs> I could probably uh, share a bit of uh, a thing or two. Good. Good. Kaishen, you start to unwrap yours. An ode to the noble sock, a tribute. This book <clears throat> pays tribute to the humble sock exploring its history, cultural significance, styles, and designs. It also includes tips on how to care for and maintain socks to ensure they last as long as possible. I'm giving it to Scrim. <laughs> Do you not like gift? I just, no, I loved the gift. I just knew that it was more appropriate for him. I know, Taishan, hold on to it just in case. We'll see what happens. Ah, okay. you know? I'll keep I appreciate it. We'll just share it. Ah, I appreciate it, but you know, we'll, maybe we'll read together. You know what they say, man. <laughs> Five feet apart. A in gift the same room. <laughs> that you would you know. give your friend is one of the gifts that you hold closest to your heart. That's true. What? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Taishan and I are just, you know, two guys. Sitting in a library five feet apart reading the same book. It's fine. No socks survive. Book about socks. Socks stay on while I read the book about socks. You're in here. You start to un... Wow, I have so many of these. Um, you un... Uh, 
pack your your present from Manius, from Man, from Manny, and you, uh, the secret life of rocks, in ogre's perspective. This book <laughs> explores the hidden world of rocks from an ogre's perspective, discussing the various types of rocks found in Ogreton, their uses, and significance to ogres. It also includes tips on how to collect and care for rocks, as well as how to use them in various ogre rituals and cu- customs. I'll like, start flipping through it and like, reading little bits of it. Thank you, Mammy. Mm. Oh, cleavage. Yes. <laughs> Funny chapter. And all that's all I'll say. You start to unwrap your present. The joys of stomping. <laughs> A guide to ogre footwork. The book celebrating the art of stomping, discussing the various techniques and strategies used by ogres to make their presence known through footwork. It also includes tips on how to improve your own stomping skills. Mm. Tai Shen, keep the sock book. <laughs> what did you get? Nope, don't ask. <laughs> oh, is that boy Quintinius Tarantarus? <laughs> 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 oh, that is one hell of an ogre name. <laughs> that is one. That's really good. That was really oh funny. My God, that's wow. really that was really funny. funny. That's really funny. Wow, if I gave you that inspiration, it's really good. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That was quite funny. And Queenie, you you pull the paper away and you find the joys of doing laundry. (laughs) This book celebrating the often overlooked... Really going to give this to the one woman in the party? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Exactly right. (laughs) The often overlooked task of doing laundry, discussing the various stages of the process Uh and offering tips and tricks for making it more efficient and enjoyable. It also includes information on different types of cleaning methods. Thank you, man, for giving me this <laughs> book on how to do laundry. Man, ogre proud. <laughs> mm, laundry yeah. for Queenie. Yeah. As it should be. Thank you. Good. Man, Manny, I don't know how to tell you this. Happy but. New Year. Happy New Year. Mm-hmm. Yes, good. And he takes another large swig of his beer. I just checked Twitter, you're canceled. <laughs> <laughs> the Twitter. I'm birds. sorry. You see the two birds that you. The, the, the one oh, bird that you. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the two birds bird. they fly down. Ah! 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 Oh, I have deciphered the their tweets. Yeah. Manny is cancelled. <laughs> Yikes! Oh, God. Manny is clearly pleased. <laughs> Manny is you know, it's, it's really weird. The whole stomping thing is okay, but you know, the whole laundry thing, no good. No good. Weird. Because there's a lot of weird shit in this book. <laughs> Well, you think that this, Mr. Foyer Blossom, you think that this was some subtle way for Manny to tell me to touch grass? <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose it's possible. But I, I think he likes you. <laughs> Why would he give that to you? Oh, uh, you know, like like I said, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, unless it's sea grass. I used to know some fellas who used to run a lot of grass, but you know, maybe. Anyway, well, I just wanted, to, I, was, I wanted to make sure you didn't think it was a coded message. No, it could be that he thinks that you just deal in the movement of it quite a bit, and he wants you to be able to tend to it for better uh, <coughs> boat marauding. All right, I'm not a smuggler anymore, but. There's nothing a sailor needs more than to learn about grass. <laughs> I'm not a sock tender, but I've got my book, too. Well, I'm a woman, so I guess my book will do just fine. Yeah, it just makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy. <laughs> Even wear shoes. Tai <laughs> <laughs> Shen! Oh, Man- yeah. Manny is also given, is also given <laughs> Daisy a book. And uh, she pulls. She pulls. <laughs> wow. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, what the fuck that was coming from? I mean, this is the kind of thing we get now that Rich is full time uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, audio cuts. Uh, you you see Daisy get your attention, Queenie, and uh, she's like, 
I mean, you're telling me about about these books. This is, and she hands you the book. What she's been gifted by Manny is the Great Book of Grunt, a compendium, a compendium, of what? a compendium of ogre sounds. This book is a comprehensive guide to various grunts, growls, and other vocalizations used by ogres in communication. It includes a dictionary of ogre sounds as well as tips on how to use them effectively and appropriately. Oh. It's like. I can't even use this. This do you, is. You, do you want the laundry one, and I'll take the grunt one? I don't, I don't really want. Oh, you think either. that's still a problem? The birders, <laughs> the birders just shifted their gear towards you. <laughs> <laughs> They're screaming at Tyson, and they are uh, glaring at Queenie now. Well, I'm I, just asking. You can have whichever one. You, you can. I mean, you care for grass. I no. don't wear a whole lot of clothes. So. <laughs> do you think you'll benefit from this? I mean, the laundry at least maybe has something. <laughs> laundry. We, we don't have an opportunity to really do our laundry much when we're out adventuring. Like, Would you, you like to you try? You smell us. <laughs> smell, smell what? Us. Oh, no. I, I mean, oh, no. I, I smelled you the first time when we met. Yeah. So <laughs> the laundry one really ain't going to do much for us either. I guess I'll keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? It's the thought that counts. Happy New Year, everyone. You know, I hope it's not the thought that counts on this one. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, you know, Happy I, New am. Year. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I'm really getting into stomping. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm the iron of stomping. <laughs> I, mean, like, I mean, at a certain point, they start introducing the cake the and pies. You gotta start with the really this, you know, you go, look, 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 there's a diagram of a guy stepping on a pie. <laughs> <laughs> Why would the Wait, one that one is that? shocking. <laughs> Detail. I don't know, but now that I've seen it, I want to try it. <laughs> Looking around, you see that this is the opportunity for gifts. Uh, Manny is giving gifts to his family. Uh, they're giving gifts to him. Uh, uh, you get small trinkets. Um, Daisy seems to have prepared gifts for each of you. If you have prepared gifts for each other, now is the time during this great first feast of New Year's Eve. Do I have to clear these by you? Or do you trust me? Yeah, same with no, my no, gifts. I, I, don't, I don't give a shit. I, I feel like you would trust us. <clears throat> I mean, as long as you're not like, here's a... It's not a magical item. Yeah, there's no drill, though. Here's like, a device of quality. I don't want you to give them, like, magic items. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no you're good. These, these are not magic items. <laughs> not magic items. Definitely not a drill, though. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a drill, though. <laughs> Definitely not. I, I would like to roll an insight check. <laughs> please, please. Roll. An insight check on Andy. Uh, <laughs> you succeed. I'm telling the truth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Give, right. give, 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 yes, you please. <laughs> as long as you could justify producing it in this okay. world, I think that you all have an established understanding of what is available to you at this time. Does anyone want to go first? I, I, I have gifts for each of you. Okay. Well, great. Uh, Here. And she hands each of you gifts, and you start to unpack them. Daisy does. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Don't tell Manny. And you know that the ogres still don't understand these gestures, so whispering doesn't make sense, but she still leans in conspiratorially. I stole these from the library, uh, from his personal library. They're not, they're not books, these are scrolls. Scrolls that have been accumulated over however long we, we've been here. Here. And she, she hands you each. Uh, Taishan, you start to unwrap your scroll. And you find a spell scroll of cutting hand. Whoa. Wow. Scrim, you find a spell scroll of last image. <laughs> Queenie, you find a spell scroll of magical tether. <clears throat> Your near, you find a spell scroll of hailstorm. Oh. All of these are custom spells that you did not choose. That I have gifted you in, in Icebound pre- previously. Oh. Just a one-off consumable niceness. But because Barnabas is not a spell scroll person, you have a large, long rod of a package. 
<laughs> Rich is in rare form tonight. <laughs> Excuse he's, he's him. I say true. <laughs> and time. you unwrap it. And it's great. Hold on, length. bottom bus, let me help you with that. <laughs> oh, I can handle it, my own bottom sure, back. You, you don't need a little pump or a stomp? Keep your grubby balls away from my bottom bus. I've been thinking about the joys of stomping. <laughs> and I'm ready. I got my, my goblin heel ready. I know you're not a, a spell user in the same way, but and you have a special way, but this, I found this. It's, well, it's the thought that counts. You don't need to worry, young lady. I, I, I'd appreciate even if it was magical. I could just look pretty. Well, I'll I don't know it if in it's my magical, face. but it, 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 it seemed like it might be something you would enjoy. It's a piece of the ship. I found a, a, a fragmented a bar of it out in the woods. <laughs> I open it. You do. And I turn and around, I have a tail. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what's special about this. Barnabas, your lobster color! God! Yeah, his, his skin starts peeling yeah. off in sheets. Um, what you find is a very, like, honed to the edge, but jagged almost like a lightning bolt. Uh, a piece of fragmented metal. Alien metal. Metal that you've never experienced before. But it does feel in your hands like a javelin. Ooh. And this is a single-use javelin of lightning. Oh. <sighs> Just like the weapon of the Merlin King. <laughs> was that Journey 3? Wait, that was the first voyage. You weren't paying attention. Journey 3 was awesome. the three-eyed monkey. I'm sorry. It was the three-headed monkey. It was the three-headed monkey. Dang it. We were going to have to. <laughs> Perhaps it was real all along. Thank you very much, young lady. I will treasure this and keep it in my barnacle encrusted netting. <laughs> Thank you. And she takes a bite of her chili. Thank you for this. Ah, and uh, uh, seconded, thirded. Uh, no, very nice. Thank it's you. Very kind. Look, I, I, these are gifts for the tradition. I'll. I was happy to do it because. You guys are cool. You guys are awesome. <laughs> well, I love you guys. But I guess not. Not. I owe you my life a hundred times over. That's that's. I'll never be able to repay that debt. But this is a nice gesture. Well, I guess that leads to my gift to you. Uh, I asked you before I left if I could borrow Honey's old bow, the one you've been using, and uh, you know my bows. I carved it all up. It's got all the bees and the flowers and stuff on it. So I want to do something similar for you. And so I pull out the bow and it is now carved with daisies and a few bumblebees to represent honey. Um, and there are small things hidden in there to represent us and our travels and all the things that we've done. Um, and I, I freshly strung it. So um, I was out hunting by myself and so I pulled off the old string and there's a, a piece of sinew there to give it really pull it taut so that you can get the best shots possible and uh, here's uh, about 20 arrows for you to uh, use and go forth and do what you need to do but it's got a little bit of everybody that you love right there on it <coughs> and you can keep them with you everywhere you go thank you you're welcome happy new year yeah. Well, and I guess I'll do nice things for the rest of you, too. So, Scrim, I don't like the fact that you cheat and lie. Oh. Well. But <clears throat> I know that it's part of who you are, and I love you just as you are. So, oh. from that caribou that I killed, I used some of the bones to make you these weighted dice. Oh my And I will give gosh. Scrim the weighted dice. Queenie, this is... I will cherish these forever. And they Thank won't you. count against your inventory. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, give him, <clears throat> give him a roll, Mr. Stabascoach. Well, I... I would be honored. And I will roll them. And they'll snake eyes. Well, <laughs> would you look at that? <laughs> Don't need you look at it. Might use this against you later. I tried to make them look just like any other dice. Nothing super special. However, I did carve a couple of things in there. Uh, if you look around, you'll find them. There's a little, there's a little bee for me. 
there's a rune for Yornir, there's a tea leaf for Tashen, and there's a shell for Barnabas. Yeah, how about that? These are beautiful. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. I Thank you. All right, now, Tashen, while I was out, I was looking around because I don't know much about tea, but I had heard that tea can be found in a plethora of climates, that it's an evergreen plant. It's and true. so I thought, what if I could find you some tea that always make you think of this place? And so I dried some, and from over my shoulder, I'll pull a bundle of white tea leaves. <sighs> so these are for you. I know it's not carved up or anything, but... You know, it's, it should last you a while. And I dried them myself. They smell really nice and fresh. Uh, Queenie, this is fantastic. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'll brew some right now to share with everybody. Oh, that'd be lovely, yeah. I'll put it away in my tea pouch and keep out just uh, enough to make a pot of tea. Are we buy like a bonfire or something? Like it's with a... Yeah, I would say I would say that um, you've been up. moving back and forth from yeah. like a, a, a feeding table and also just like a genuine fire. It's still cold and it's still softly snowing. It's been softly snowing the entire day, uh, and you are um, drawn to the warmth. Everyone is circled in this way. Uh, for you, Barnabas, uh, I know that you have your ancient estuary, and you like to. Uh, you like to season everything with that. But I thought maybe every once in a while when you're making something that can use a little bit of sweetness, you might be able to use some of this. I carved the uh, I carved the container myself out of a, a hunk of wood that I found in passing. Uh, it looked worn and weathered like it had maybe seen the rains or the water in some way. Maybe thank you. Um, but I whittled it away into this nice little honey pot, essentially. And I carved your shell right there on the front for you. Oh, and uh, my bees that. went to work, and it is full of honey just for you to use whenever you see fit. Well, thank you very much, Miss March. My box cannot produce honey, and I have a bit of a sweet tooth. Well, it won't last forever. My bees don't like to give it up, so I wouldn't expect I will... it to be refilled, so use it sparingly. Well, tomorrow we'll have very special monkey bread. Oh. <laughs> oh, little chunky monkey bread. I don't eat monkeys, and I'm gluten intolerant, so oh, I'll just have a There'll sandwich. be a shortage oh. of honey in the valley. Look at that. Very nice uh, carving, Miss March. Nice whittling skill. Yeah, thank you, sir. My love would love it. A skill that was taught to me by someone very special Beautiful. to me. So. And then lastly, this is for you, Yornir. Um, I looked and uh, hunted for a long time for one that was very, for a caribou that was very special uh, to make this gift for you. The first thing is this little holster made out of the hide to hold it. And then this blade of bone, and you'll see a small blade of bone. It's about more queenie sized than Yornir sized. Now, I don't know your runes very well, but I've been paying attention, um, and so I tried to put the runes on there. We can work on them, too, if they need to, of your three deities that you talk about all the time, and the symbol of lightning, so that any time you don't believe in yourself, you'll remember that I believe in you, and I'll sheath it into the holster and hand it to you. And that's what I was out doing in the woods. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I, I'm... I'm beside myself. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I know we've been through a lot, and we started this thing off not necessarily as friends, but as people who had seen similar things. And through the course of it, we became friends, and now I think we're, we're family of a sort. So Aye. With this new year, I hope that whatever adventures come our way, we never lose sight of the fact that we belong together. And I wouldn't be Queenie March without you guys. I got you something. I was I was nervous to say it, but then you gave me these beautiful dice, and I feel like you know, now's the time, right? Yeah, sure. I, I was I was out looking for things for people, and you know, I was I was here and there, and I found the most beautiful arrowhead. Oh, and it is a naturally formed arrowhead. It's not perfect. It's rough. But it is, it's made of stone, and it's something that Scrim would have dug up from maybe 
you know, the ground where he happened to be walking past. And I, I don't know if it'll make a good actual arrowhead, but at the very least, it'll be something that you can remember me by. Well, for one, I could never forget you even if I tried, and I wouldn't. And two, this is spectacular, Scrim. I know exactly what I'm going to use it for. Thank you, buddy. <sighs> thank, thank you. I, I mean, thank you. Taishen, uh, the tea that you've shared with us has been <sighs> wonderful, and uh, Queen's just so good at what she did. She found you actual tea. I just, I found flowers. They're just, it reminds me of the flowery nature of the tea, and I, I wouldn't make tea out of it. Those are lavender. You know they make tea out of that. And oh. it can grow in cold climates, too. I was looking for that, and I couldn't find it. I, I was going to oh. say, don't make tea out of it, because it would probably kill all of us, but I trust Queenie. Scrim, are you kidding? I, I would love to make tea from this. It's either, I mean, chances are it's either delectable tea or deadly poison. You had a very <laughs> lucky time finding your gift, <laughs> finding an arrowhead-shaped rock like you did that actually is perfect, finding lavender when the ranger didn't. Oh, sometimes luck, sometimes you roll with weighted dice, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, if, if Queenie says it's good to make tea with, I, I, I trust her. It's going in the pot right now to it, add That's in. a perfect mix, the two of them together. And, uh... <clears throat> Barnabas. Mr. Savage I made you this, and Scrim will hold you out a horrific, like... <laughs> Like winded together like wooden fetish <laughs> to ward against witches. I listened to what you say, and I made I made a a, a horrific. Well, now I think it looks lovely, but it's a it's a, it's, a, it's protection. Mister Saviskelch, I did not know that you were on the up and up of folklore of, of, of certain cultures of chalk. He said. It's actually Will Ward against witches. I, I, I did what I could. Oh, you! I am impressed. Thank you very much, Mister Shabascotch. It means a lot. Yeah. You and you. I'll be honest. I'm at a loss. I hand you a pipe cone. <laughs> <laughs> and Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> We've been <clears throat> on quite the adventure. And, well, you, we've been through a lot. And Barnabas talked to freedom. So I talked to one of the ogres and I had them take some chain link and turn it into a ring. You could wear it around your neck or whatever. It doesn't matter. But the point is, we're all free now, right? Just like Barnabas says. Here. Here. And it's a crudely, it's a crude piece of, of chain, iron chain link, just bent to be a ring. That's all I got. Thank you. That's really nice, Scrim. So thoughtful. Did you see the pine cone? Oh, yeah, that pine was cone. quite nice. How did he know? It this looks... is a pine cone. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it was. It, it took me a long time <laughs> to find the pine cone. I, I look it. over to the side and there's a pile <laughs> of pine cones. They're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I will say, you look underneath. You, you're like. <laughs> Giving it an extra, a second look, you're near. You're, you're giving it a second look as you as you scan the pine <laughs> cone, good. and underneath you notice a growth, a positive growth, something that you've been looking for for a long time. I knew it was gonna be and <laughs> scraping underneath, you find a hint enough for the component that would be worth mistletoe. I knew it. I knew it. The moment you said actually, I'm like, you fucking... <laughs> uh, look, I... You had a very I, lucky walk. I, I belabored, I thought about it, and you know, that's what I came to, Pinecone. So anyway, how's everyone else doing? <laughs> it is nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, but, no, but really, thank you. Thank you. 
<laughs> your near, you see what, what's on the bottom of that pine cone? What? It's a bit of mistletoe on the bottom of that pine cone. I don't think mistletoe grows in this climate. I know. Did you see other pine cones on your walk, Scrim? That's the one that just stuck uh, out to you. Oh, they were hot. No, there were no <laughs> pine cone. I mean, it was the only pine cone I saw, and I was trying but to you pick were the drawn, best. You were drawn to it. Though, pick huh? the best for your near. Hmm. Certainly Jeez. wasn't a last minute gift idea. <laughs> well, it was a good last minute gift idea. Thank it you. It wasn't last minute at all. I belabored over the point for days. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, I'm glad we're in agreement. Is everyone done eating? Are, yeah, we done, are, are, we, are we done giving gifts? Yeah, I think so. Do you, do you really have gifts? Yeah, I mean, you know, I only received one gift. <laughs> I was really expecting I three have or a, four. I have, a, I have a rapid round of uh, gifts I can give. <laughs> oh, thank yeah. goodness, because yeah. I thought we were just giving and not receiving. <laughs> well, I, I was just going to say we were, we were all going to go down and, and skate on the ice of the lake, but... Just really quick. <laughs> <laughs> really quick. Um, so as you know, I've been going to the, uh, going to the crater and bringing up ice and, uh, I've never done this before, but, uh, I've carved a selection of ice sculptures for everybody, uh, that I thought you would all really enjoy. Queenie, for you, um, uh, Bear Jones. Oh. <laughs> or my best. <laughs> <laughs> my, that, that's his name, right? Mr. Jones is looking <laughs> handsome. <laughs> Mr. Best, Mr. Bear Jones. Oh, my, oh best my God, this is this is wow. for you as it is for me. Because the, 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 the tension is palpable and I'm about to throw up. It's been 22 months since I've said the words Bear Jones in that order. And I just love you so much. I, I just want you to know. His name was Bear Jones in love. Oh my, this is either going to go really great or really badly. <laughs> I know that, um, oh, now I'm nervous. I know that. Ronnie Mervis. I'm ru Ronnie Mervis. <laughs> time in the Diamond Empire. I know that. I, I was given time, given time. Uh, it, it can be tough to retain the face of someone do who you, meant so much to you. Do you affectionately wanna, call him Bear Jones when you're talking about him? Um, I guess. That's all right. He, I think he would like that name. Well, perfect. Oh, sweet Jesus. Anyway, here he is. I promised this would be quick, so. Thanks. And I don't he, know how I'm going to feel when he melts. But he's well, <laughs> I think what my hope was that in the land of Drakkar would never happen, but once we leave, these gifts are just Oh, no, away. it's, uh, aside from the warmth of your hands you know that this would actually be extremely well preserved for a long long time it, it's it's just closing in on zero right it looks mm -hmm. beautiful Tashin. thank you oh well, thank you uh barnabas for you. you you carved the name bear jones into the base well i just I really thought it was his name so i love that <laughs> yeah thank you barnabas for right, you a, fire blossom. a recreation of the sea monster you killed in uh, your dream that we all shared together. It's been such a long time since you've been able to slay one, and I thought you'd enjoy the sight of one of your conquests. Mr. Fire Blossom, you were paying attention! Well... Look at the detail. Oh, you, know, you got the placement of the fin slightly wrong, but you know what? This is... Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, we dove into its mouth, and I was really afraid. Well, I mean, you got the mouth perfect. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a lot of teeth. I couldn't forget that's it. That's impressive. It's burned into my memory for all of my life, I think. Yeah. That was a beautiful sea monster <laughs> that you just gave me. I'm glad that you like it. Oh, it's beautiful. You're near for you. I know that your gods are important to you and I know that you have many things to think of them and, and recognize them but I carved something simple a, a trinity of sorts to bring them together uh, and it's like a ice replication of a like a triforce some sort of trinity yep mm -hmm. I appreciate this thank you of course and scrim for you why are you laughing? Well, I'm not laughing. Just that was a pack of ice for you. <laughs> <laughs> just a cut-off bag of ice for it. I'm just kidding. It's not that. 
Uh, your adorable new dog friend. Super cute. Oh. Mm. What are you handing me? <laughs> Ice sculpture <laughs> carving that loosely resembles Scooby Doo. As soon as you hand it to me, I like. Like Whoa. throw it like five feet away. I spent five minutes on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the meme of of Mac and Dennis, and Dennis throws the plate down, oh, yeah. down the hallway. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it lands like five or six feet away. <sighs> I thought that you would like that. I thought you and he were friends. I've misjudged the situation. It's okay, Tashi. Just is your tea ready? I'm not mad. I'm not see. mad at you, Taishen. I'm upset at the situation, and I, I apologize. Um, you're all right, Mister Samuskatch. Would you prefer just a gold coin? I have a hundred and ninety-three of those. But you want they, to have one hundred ninety-four? I wouldn't say no. Oh shit! I can't do math. <laughs> Um, I'll just take the tea. <laughs> Thank you, Taishet. Thank you. I'll enjoy it with you. In the event that it's deadly poison. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy the tea. And you're watching as more and more of this strange tribe starts to make their way down. It's going to be midnight soon. Everybody's eaten exchanged gifts unless Barnabas you have I always like hold this and I will say I'd like to save my gift for when it's just us the end of the night when it's the new year if you don't mind not at all I don't think and, there are any rules and I don't I don't expect anything from any of y'all I did not give give gifts with the expectations of getting any of them in return. Right, well, that's where Queenie and I differ, because I was giving <laughs> gifts with the expectations of getting something in return, but but if it makes it better for you to wait for the New Year, Scrim will understand. I got you all the best gift you could possibly imagine. The best. I Nobody have... gives better than Barb Barnabas. I suppose I could give gifts before we go down and have fun and games. I did not prepare any gifts. Oh, what? that's okay. Oh, you can still hear Holy shit! Where did he come from? <laughs> Holy fuck! Oh, has that been awkward for you not getting any of the gifts in this rotation? Been, uh, sitting here eating this chili is very good. Oh, oh she's quiet. <laughs> I got a gift for you. You Dad? did? I did. For Born in the Boss. Reason my pack. Uh, sometimes you are stubborn. Disagree with the rest of us. Sometimes. And for this, I made you a goat. And I take out this little straw goat made of like the straw that I had gotten from, from Ogreton and maybe some from the stables. Um, and it's like held together with twine and like little red ribbons and it's bent and kind of shaped into the shape of a little goat and I kind of put it in my palm. Taishen, you have mighty horns, and that reminds me of a goat. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Queenie. He noticed. No, I still, I still have it on uh, my hand. Oh. I'm going to have them all, all together. Oh. Uh, Queenie, you have very strong and powerful legs like the noble goat of the mountain. <laughs> so I made you a goat, and it's like the exact same goat. <laughs> Scream? You scream often. <laughs> I, I do. Like a goat. <laughs> <laughs> this is but, uh, so much better than the horrific reminder of the thing that haunts me every day of my life. That's just so cute. And Daisy, I think back to the time where we almost lost you. Because of that, you remind me of the mighty Gear Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> this extremely intricate, strong Gear Falcon. <sighs> it almost led to your demise, but we killed it. It's ten times bigger than the rest yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. uh, uh, 
goods fine, my man, and I throw all of them into the fire. Oh! And oh! as they're burning, I'll take out a uh, handful of incense and I'll throw it in the fire, and my eyes will alight, and I will say, Olden, on them, Mammoth Three, through the flames now speak to me, Princess of the Land and Frost. An ally, an ally gained or deadly cost. And I would like to cast, uh, I think it's divination, <laughs> where I reach out to a god or divine figure, and as long as that I feel like that sacrifice is worth 25 gold pieces, hopefully this should work. I'd pay 25 gold pieces. Uh, I'd pay 25 gold pieces. I'd throw some gold coins <laughs> from my, my purse. <laughs> Uh, I, wait, wait, I uh, just gifted you. Wait, you're, you're playing D&D? <laughs> the rest of us didn't get the memo. Your magic and an offering put you in contact with a god or a god servant. You ask a single question concerning a specific goal, <gasps> event, or activity to occur within seven days. The GM offers a truthful reply. The reply may be a short phrase, a cryptic rhyme, or an omen. The spell does not take into account any possible circumstances that might change the outcome, such as the casting of additional spells or the loss or gain of a companion. If you cast a spell two or more times before finishing your land next long rest, there's a cumulative 25% chance of each casting after the first that you get a random reading. I'm with Mike. My whole character up to this point, this session was masturbation. This is where Derek ends the session. (laughs) Okay. What's your question? So my question, I'm asking the gods if if the she's an ally, if the Princess of Wrath is an ally gained or a, it will meet a deadly cost. Basically, like, is it good or bad? Is she our friend or not? Yeah. Is she sus? Is she sus? <laughs> is she or, sus? Or bussin? <laughs> is she sus? <laughs> is she sus? I'm just going to tell you that. <laughs> We're going to tell you that. <laughs> God for real, yeah, for, for real, real. No, no cap, is, yeah. no cap, no cap. Is she how, sussy how you, in the drug I see? I said, let me pull it up here. I wrote it down give there. the man five minutes. He's oh, his Odin Amum Mamut three. Through the flames, now speak to me, princess of the land and frost. An ally gained or deadly cost. Through the fire and flame starts playing. <laughs> 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 The answer has to be a yes or a no. No, it no. can be a no. No, no. You, you can, can be a write rhyme, a, rhyme, a sentence, a yeah. riddle. Yeah. It's, done it's it. basically like legend. A omen. It but can... it's it's literally if it works and there is a god that I can commune with or a godly creature, it can then speak to me. In but it this. can be cryptic. It can be an omen. It can be anything. But it needs to be truthful. It's supposed to be truthful. It needs to be truthful. Yeah, no, no, no. It needs oh. to be truthful. And it's not like a wheel or what. I mean, you can just say it like it could be. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the dragoosy bussin. <laughs> for real, for real. No cap. Oh, for God. real, on the gods. <laughs> on Odin. Oh. Give me five. Yeah. Yep. Take a break. I know, I know, I know it's one thirty. Yeah. yeah. Well, take, take so a, take a, we can also call it. <laughs> so... It's ages. What you could do is basically have a little bit of dramatic flash as if you're preluding it and then you end the session. That's yeah, how I, I would do it. Because we can yeah. cut this out. We'll cut this cut out. That, cut that, yeah, cut yeah, yeah, yeah. Only people who have it live are going to know this. Up to you, Derek. It's your session. I mean, we're not, I'm not even, going we're not anywhere. even close I'm prepared, to where I want to I'm prepared to, to sleep on the floor. Oh, right. You yeah. started this session by yeah. saying. Yeah. We just do, talk a lot. Yeah. We do have so an emote to reveal if we want to like just kill a little bit of time while you think. That's I'm awesome. also sick and I'm feeling very oh, tired and true. have a headache. <laughs> it is, yeah. As you watch the burning straw and and material f- flame and 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 crush down, you. Get your answer. And that's where we'll end the next <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Derek.